I wish I knew like foreign languages so I could say something like, you know, bonsoir mon amis, but I don't know what that means. So I might be saying something stupid. Hello, everybody in English. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Squarespace, which we were talking about before the podcast even began. So we're not bullshitting you. We tell you it's awesome. Powerful Nick Yusuf uses Squarespace. Uh, Brian's made at least 20 or 30 websites, right? If you had a guess. Yeah. Yeah, probably. It's super easy to do. It used to be a huge pain in the ass if you wanted to get a website. Unless you were super lucky and knew some guy who was awesome and was easy to deal with, like me. I have found an awesome guy. But if you, uh, my friend Menthol. But if, if you don't find that, you're fucked. You, you know, you got to try to learn coding yourself. Good luck. Good luck. It's difficult. And it's also, it used to be really difficult to match things up. Like for uh, one browser, it would look great. But then you would see it in Safari. It would look all wonky. Or, you know, it'd work good with a Windows, but it wouldn't work with a Mac or whatever it was. There was always issues with compatibility, like iPhone compatibility. A lot of times that would be squirrely. Squarespace, they have it set up where your website will work on everything. It'll work on an Android phone. It'll work on an iPad. It'll work on one of those those tablets of unknown origin that you uh, run various operating systems on. It just fucking works. Works awesome. You can set up an online store. Super easy to do. Just point and click, drag and drop. They have 24-7 support. It's simple, easy, beautiful designs, and it looks completely professional. Like, look at this website. He's slapping together a website right now, a Nick Yusuf website. <laughs> and he can do it like that. Just, I mean, it's, it comes out like, like you hired somebody, like you <laughs> spent a lot of money, and you can bang them out quick. They just got it wired. They figured it out. Like, there's no need to, to, to go anywhere else anymore. You can make your own shit, especially if you're even remotely creatively inclined, but you were just technologically ignorant, you know? If, you, if that was the case, this is super easy to use. Uh, Squarespace has a logo creator. You can create a clean, simple logo design for yourself in minutes. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and enter in the code word Joe. Squarespace, a better web, starts with your website. That's what they make you say. <laughs> That's their part. It's really easy. It's, it's so drag and drop. Like if you want a map, like say like if you have a store and you want a, a Google map. No, like I love Harvard, them. You, I'm going to eventually. drag it right there. Yeah, it's great. great. If I get some time, I want to make my own website. It's, it's fun. fun. I made mine in like four hours. Yeah. <laughs> but you, the one you just made is better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're also brought to you by Ting. I got my new Ting phone here. Oh. Ting is, which is the official, I got the Galaxy uh, S5. Brand. Oh, that's oh, it. cool. Yeah, I just got it. I'm a phone whore. Here's my little phone whore device. Um. It's dope little phone. I like the fact that it's waterproof. That's pretty slick. That's the new thing. They're yeah. all be becoming waterproof. It makes so much more sense. Fuck yeah. You can drop this phone in water, dude. Wow. Yeah. And it's just like, what? It gets out of the water. What, bitch? Water resistant. Some of them are actually waterproof. Right. I believe there's a Sony that's actually waterproof, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, Ting is a, a website, or Ting's a, a mobile service company that uses uh, Sprint. What they do is... You buy your phone from them, and then they they handle all the rest. It all goes through a Sprint backbone, but you do it by their rules, and their rules are just a lot fairer, a lot easier for people to digest. You know, I think everybody enjoys paying for things that are worth it. You know, it's nice when you go to a good restaurant and you get a nice meal and you, you pay for it. You feel good about it. It was like a good experience. Like that was great. You leave there. Whatever you spent was totally worth it. It's always a shitty feeling when, you know, even if you enjoy something, if you feel like you got fucked over or you feel like it's too much or you feel like it's not fair. And for the longest time, the way cell phone uh, companies have done business has irked a lot of people one of the things being that you pay for your minutes like you know you have like this thing like 120 minutes but if you don't use that 120 minutes you don't get any money back like that money's just gone like all that time is out in the ether and ting was like well why do you have to pay for shit you're not using how about this how about we work out a really simple way to do it where most people would save money and we just do it by the minute. Like, whatever you use, that's what you pay for. If you don't use that much, you pay less. And if you want to save money, use your fucking phone less. You know, like, you could really do that. And Ting figured out how to do it. 
And I think that all cell phone companies in the future are probably going to follow that model. I think it's going to be one of those things like, remember you used to pay for roaming? You'd get in your phone and you'd drive 20 minutes, or you'd get in your car rather, and you've ha you have your phone on you. And 20 minutes outside of the city, you'd be roaming. So it cost you like some ridiculous amount of money. Where'd all that go? All that shit went away. It had to go away because companies like Ting come along and they come up with a better way to do it. And um, that's what I feel. I think the Ting. minute, the whole minute thing is going to go away soon. Because I was just thinking, I don't, how many minutes I, a month I use on my cell phone talking? Yeah. I'd barely talk on my phone. Do I could think probably you use get, a minute a month. I bet 10 minutes a month, no <laughs> doubt. I bet I, I use 10 minutes a month. That, they yeah. charge for data now in the same way they used to charge for minutes. Yeah. Because minutes weird. are like nothing. Yeah, minutes are nothing anymore. Oh, I, don't, I'm st I still don't totally understand why data is expensive. It's confusing to me. Like, I get storing it would be expensive, and I, I hmm, boy, I don't understand it. I mean, is it electricity being used? <laughs> I mean, what is being used? There's bandwidth, right? Yeah. yeah. But what exactly is bandwidth? Like, this I is how no stupid idea. I am. This is how stupid I am on something that I rely on on a daily basis. Yeah. I don't know jack shit about how the internet works. Yeah, you're pretty much paying to use computers to transfer data to you. So okay. it's it's using computers. It's way overpriced than it should be, definitely. Well, I don't know about all that. Because <laughs> imagine if you had to reset it up yourself. <laughs> hey, you know, the, the internet, they quit. Right. Um, everybody quit. Time to make a new internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how much would it cost? How how could you ever come up with 4G on your own? Hmm? Yeah. No, we we need these fuckers. I don't know how they're. It doing It would be this. smoke signals for me. <laughs> That's the next step. I'm like, there's no internet. I guess I'm yelling and starting yeah, fires. Yelling louder. We should be. We should be so happy that there are people out there that are way smarter than us to figure that fucking thing out. We should be so happy. You know, yeah. we would have never figured out the internet. There's some like that that just the evidence that the internet is real. That is one of the best evidences that there are people that are just so far beyond how fucking smart you think smart is. It's like remember when you were like 5 or 6 years old, you had like um, a lot of times you had like this one kid in the neighborhood that maybe was like a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger than the other kids, and when you would play with them on the field, like you'd get like bummed out, like you'd get knocked over and shit. Like Remember what you thought that was, like that was a strong little kid? But if you were there right now, you'd be like, get out of here, you little fuck. <laughs> Stop knocking into everybody. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, I was more scared that he had freckles or something like that. Yeah, you'd be like, get out of here, you fucking little weirdo. Don't be mean to me. I'm a grown-ass man. But that's what I feel like, like technologically and, and just the, the, the mental capacity of a super genius in comparison to me. I feel like... If uh, I'm that little kid, and like if I tried to figure out how the fuck they figured out the internet, I'd just be like, oh, my brain doesn't work that good. <laughs> I can't talk to you. Yeah. You're freaking me out, man. You know, if you, if you went into one of those dudes' offices, and they had all those crazy, like, goodwill hunting shit on the wall, and he's doing those equations that fucking nobody understands. Yeah. You know, that they'll work on for years. You know, even the professor didn't. Yeah, He's like how did you? What I didn't the even fuck? know that. Yeah, remember, like in Goodwill Hunting, the fucking the the janitor fixes the problem. They leave it open so the janitor can work on the problem. <laughs> really? Yeah. What if he just erased it? What if he's just crazy? Yeah. He's not. Why are you a janitor, bitch? This is a stupid story. <laughs> <laughs> You're a super genius janitor. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. You're smarter than anybody. You can figure out these equations that nobody else can, and you're also beautiful. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? And charming. What and are funny the odds? <laughs> anyway, rogan.ting.com. Go get a phone. They're awesome. Um, they have all the best Android phones. Uh, and I said, like I said, this one I got that's uh, waterproof is the Galaxy S5. That's going to make the drought worse. The Galaxy S5 is going to make the drought worse? you'll be texting in the shower <laughs> for like two hours. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah, People are going to start like, not worrying about like the pool and shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, remember when they were dipping phones? There was like a company that would dip them, like dip your iPhone, and then they would send it back to you and it would essentially be waterproof. That's, that's, probably what they, that's probably what they did with these. They probably just dipped them. Maybe. But did, did that, that work? totally work? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Did that work? Does anybody know if that worked? I think for water resistance, it has to work. It's... Not just that. dipping it. Has I mean, you to could work. drop your phone in a toilet like all of us have, and it still work. Mm -hmm. You know, so the dipping it. I mean, even if it's ninety nine percent accurate, it's still probably gonna you know huh. work enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I bet the fine print is like twenty pages long. Right. Like it's gonna be. F 
under four minutes and all these other yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably got to be like under 30 meters or something like that. They probably have like a, like what's like a good waterproof depth for a watch? Because so they, they have squirrely little rules. So they'll say water resistant up to 30 meters. Like, well, listen, bitch, is this <laughs> waterproof or not? Right. Like I guess it's like water pressure. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. That shit's legit. I mean, it, it hurts your ears. Probably would fuck with your phone too. Makes sense. Anyway, rogan.ting.com. <laughs> Go there and save twenty five bucks off a new Ting phone. You dirty savages. And uh, last but not least, we're brought to you by Onnit.com. That's O N N I T. Onnit is what you would call it, a human optimization website. We sell strength and conditioning equipment. We sell delicious snacks and foods like the Warrior Bar, which is this. Somebody actually brought this up. And I think this is uh, an important point. Somebody's brought this up to me on Twitter. Uh, there's no added nitrates in um, in these buffalo bars, but there's naturally occurring nitrates that occur in um, sea salt and in celery. So uh, that's something to uh, consider. And also, like, I don't know whether or not, like, I was I was saying on this uh, this ad before when I would read it before. One of the points is that it has no nitrates. And I don't know exactly if nitrates are actually bad for you in natural form. I don't know if they're bad for you in sea salt form or bad for you in celery or if it's just a, an amount thing. And I think that's a good question for uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick. And she's, uh, she's going to be coming back. We're exchanging emails, so hopefully I can get an answer for, from her on this kind of stuff. When it comes to health and anything like <sighs> anything that's controversial, diets and, you know, and supplementation and things along those lines, I I can't stress enough. If you got any questions about that kind of shit, you got to Google it and you got to read both sides. It's not comfortable to do. It's annoying. Like, say if you you think that like taking vitamin D is good for you, and you're like, well, I look. Let me go through. Oh, there's a bunch of papers that say vitamin D is good for you. You got to read vitamin D is bad for you. You got to read is vitamin D bad for you, and read that too. Read read whatever papers, whatever studies they have. If you don't, you're kind of guessing. Or if you know someone like Rhonda Patrick, you can ask her. That's why she's awesome. <laughs> Isn't nitrates what make you have boners? No, that's nitric oxide. Boy, I'm glad you're not a fucking doctor. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> you gave him some shit that makes beef jerky, dude. <laughs> no wonder his dick didn't get hard. <laughs> and is vitamin D bad for you? No, no okay. vitamin D is excellent for yeah, you. It's that's... the thing that most people are deficient in, apparently. Yeah. According to uh, numerous studies, they say that most people... Like seventy percent of the population does not get enough vitamin D. When I I just I, I had my physical. That's the only thing that was wrong with me. Vitamin yeah, D. everybody do it. It's super common. We're not getting enough sun. People are supposed to be on the sun all the time. You know, we're scared. Everyone's scared of cancer. I don't want to get the cancer. And dairy too, right? You get it a lot from dairy. I don't want to get the cancer. Doesn't dairy give you cancer? No, no, vitamin D. Yes, right? you get it from milk. So yeah. I'm probably very deficient. Yeah. The cows, I'm lactose intolerant. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting there. You should get your blood work done, man. Get your shit checked out. If anybody's ever interested in uh, like really getting healthy and fit, uh, getting your diet checked out, getting you know, getting your blood work done, finding out where your nutritional levels are. Eat like a, you normally would eat. Don't try to trick them. <laughs> eat like you would normally. Yeah, I'm all about kale, bro. <laughs> I'm all about organic celery. Uh, but get your, you know, go to a, a reputable place and get your blood work done. Find out where your nutrients are lacking. It's really important. A lot of times you think you have a good diet and you're just being naive. You start looking at your diet and you go, oh, I eat a lot of shit. I've never thought I had a good diet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're one up. You're one up on the delusional folks. I'll uh, have one for four days and I go, now I deserve to eat a whole pie. Yeah. Exactly. Or something terrible. There you go. Gelato yeah. in bed. Um, so the warrior bars, uh, what we were talking about, so take that into consideration, but they do have, uh, they're 140 calories, uh, four grams of fat and two ounce serving with 14 grams of protein, which is a lot, you know, that's really healthy. And it's, um, it's just natural, uh, buffalo with cranberries and, uh, it's this ancient recipe that, uh, look, Lakota people, the, uh, Lakota, uh, native Americans used to uh, preserve their buffalo with. It's delicious. It tastes good. And it's really guilt-free. Um, as far as like nitrates and celery and salt, it's, it's a ver- all a very good question. I'm going to have to look into that. Oh, yeah. It has but celery say, juice in it. I would say don't be a pussy. Don't worry about <laughs> celery and salt. Yeah, that's celery just me. juice. Just yeah, me. Are you worried about celery Fucking juice? Fucking really? sea salt and celery. <laughs> if those are the two things that are going to take you out in this game, how weak <laughs> is your defense, son? How weak? <laughs> how weak? 
Um, we sell a lot of shit at on it that we we find. Uh, you can find other places, uh, but what we try to do is just get the the best versions of it available. Like hemp force protein powder is uh, an important um, one when it comes to that. You can get hemp protein from other places, but a lot of times it's super gritty. Uh, it, it's not that easy to digest. It's just a different texture. It feels different when you drink it. Uh, it's just because it's not the highest quality. And the stuff that we buy costs more money, but it's higher in protein, and it's it's easy to digest. It's super powdery. It's really interesting, the difference between the hemp force protein powder, and uh, I've used some powders from some other companies that use the cheaper shit. It's like just more coarse, more fiber in it. And it's, uh, you know, it's like you taste it in your mouth and you're drinking grit. Uh, but as far as, like, the, your body's ability to digest it, I think it's the easiest form of protein to digest. My body has zero problems. I can I can drink a hemp force protein shake with coconut water and work out in, like, an hour. That's never – I can't do I, – there's nothing else I can eat where I can work out in an hour and I can be comfortable about it because the stuff just digests so easily. Like, I love whey. I love, like, those um, muscle milks. Those are fucking delicious. Those taste good. But uh, my body does not react that well to that stuff. Like, you know. What was the difference you noticed between muscle milk and the hemp thing? No farts. Okay. Let's be real. It's a big one. Nick Yusuf, let's <laughs> get crazy. I would fart like crazy when I would drink the whey. Remember Tate's farts? Fuck They're still that. legendary. Yeah. It's all whey <laughs> still protein. Smell them. It's it's all whey <laughs> protein, man. Um, but I like it. I like whey protein. I'm not saying it's bad, but as far as digestibility, uh, hemp force is uh, my favorite shit of all time. Whether I was selling it or not, I would tell you that. It's fucking fantastic. Um, so that's it. Go to onnit.com, O-N-N-I-T. Use the code word Rogan and you can save 10% off any and all supplements. And uh, what are the comedy dates you got coming up, Brian? Uh, this weekend, we're going to be in Tampa, Florida, me and Sam Tripoli. Uh, Friday, it's Tampa. Saturday, it's Jacksonville. And then s- Sunday is uh, Orlando. And you can go to deathsquad.tv for tickets. Powerful Florida. Yes. Prepare yourself. Ugh, Bring I mean, penicillin, son. Yeah. But those are the, it's that's like, Florida. that's like up higher, right? Like those are okay. They are the craziest <laughs> people. The craziest are the ones up high. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Those Orlando's the, in the middle. Yeah. Orlando's a good spot. Yeah. You know what? But South Florida's fun too, man. They're fun. I, I, I enjoy doing shows down there. People are crazy. It's a totally different world. It's a completely different world than the rest of America. It really is. Yeah. South Florida is wild. In all the bad ways, like Florida Man, you follow that Florida Man Twitter account. I have, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. fucking great. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, there's just no denying. I mean, I would ha- I would like to have someone like uh, Sam Harris, some like really rational guy, break down why Florida actually has no more crime. It's just that, for whatever reason, people f- focus on Florida. But I don't know if that's entirely accurate. The sheer numbers of idiocy that you get, the, the, just the numbers of morons that come out of Florida, it's f- it's I almost watched, hard to believe. I've watched almost every single episode of Cops, and Florida <laughs> is always the best episodes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great show, by the way. Do you they know that's do the a longest spin-off. running? They 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 re-edited all the old episodes of Cops, like and like made them HD and uh, edited them real qu- fast and quick. Now so oh, wow. it's called Cops Reloaded. It's, it's oh, that's like so crack. ridiculous. <laughs> I wonder how much they could do just on Florida. Oh, like if they picked out from every episode. You could just have cameras running 24 hours a day and hire some editors. And just, yeah. <laughs> just keep the cameras on. You would never go wrong. I mean, wacky shit happens in Florida. All Like, if you were a, a vice cop in Miami and you had a camera on your car, like how much... We don't need to do commercials anymore. Like, look, <laughs> it's over. It's, we're here. Yeah. Um, we don't need the music. Fuck it. Um, but if you were a vice cop and you were uh, in Miami and they just put a camera on your head, how much wacky shit would you see every year? Probably be madness. Oh, every, I mean, it would be every other day. There'd be something, something amazing. crazy. Like something everyone awful. should just have a GoPro on their head and just be traveling Well, d- they kind of do now in a lot of states. They said mm-hmm. that's lowered the instances of police harassment or police brutality yeah. substantially. And I know, I believe Los Angeles has some, some sort of program, at least on some Good. of the officers, where they put these cameras on them. You know, we're starting to see so much video of cops beating people up, man. It's really disturbing. It is. It's so disturbing. Like, that one cop um, that beat that lady up on the side of the freeway. 
You've seen that one? Yeah, that's yeah. fucked up. Holy shit. She dude. might have been mentally challenged and she was acting like, like she she was walking in the on the freeway. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what her deal was. I don't know, but if that is the only way that he can control her, she he shouldn't be a cop. Like you can't just fucking waylay somebody in the face over and over again while you're holding onto their neck on the side yeah. of the highway. You just can't do that. That's that's not defensive you're not like you're not saving them from themselves you're not saving anybody from that you're assaulting them you know like you should be able to contain that woman the woman wasn't striking him at all if you had any you know knowledge of jujitsu whatsoever you would just contain her it would be really easy to do i mean you might get hit with some clawing at you and shit but you could hold her in place and nobody has to get hurt if you're a cop it's not like that woman was attacking him. You know, if that woman was attacking him, like, say, if that woman had a bat or a knife or something, like she's coming at him, and he took her down and punched her in the face, I'm all for that. That's a dang... That might as well be an animal. A person that's attacking you with a weapon might as well be an animal. That's how I feel. Like, if, would you kick a dog that tried to bite you? Fuck yeah. A person with a knife that's coming at you, it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, they're getting punched in their fucking face. For real, right? It ha you have to. Yes. Otherwise, you're a dead man, Brian. Yes. Is running an option? Because I'd like to just run away. <laughs> from the other yeah, you, if you could run faster, definitely do it. Okay, cool. I'll do that. If you could go side to side, if you got a good juke. But at the end of the day, like if you're a cop, you can't just beat somebody up like that. You just can't do that. Like that lady's not hitting you. Like you, like she's what she wouldn't listen. Like what's going on? Like there's no way she could have been doing anything. That's that justified getting the fuck beat out of her like that. Isn't there like some police force that's now putting GoPros on all the cops? Uh, like they, their whole force, ha you have to have like a, a GoPro camera on your person now. We should probably Google yeah, this. Yeah, I, I, I just it. I just heard it the That'd other day. That'd be great. Yeah, that yeah. makes so much more sense. Because, yeah. yeah, I don't know. And would 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 it would it should be is something that broadcasts. Yeah, that would be cool. Maybe yeah, we could subscribe to co that. Would be the best cops, by the way, ever. Like, ever. ever. Yeah. Yeah. You go, home. Hmm, I want to see what's going on in my hometown, cops. You could just stream it, yeah, in real life. <laughs> what's awesome. Compton really like? Uh, it's pretty bad. Cops use GoPros to film traffic stop. Oh, this is different. I think it was Florida, actually, That now that I think about it, that was doing it. Florida police camera. Look at this. A cop uses a GoPro to film a traffic stop of a lieutenant cop. A Miami police officer, he made a routine traffic stop he discovered that it's a man of superior rank, like a cop that's superior rank to him. They started fighting, and he got suspended. Yeah, I saw that. And the lieutenant is merely reassigned. Huh. Yeah, he filmed the whole thing, too. And There's like a hierarchy. Like, that's like a weird thing, the rank thing for police officers. Like, that's some military shit. Yeah. Like, the whole rank <laughs> thing, like that he had to, like, you know, give in to a superior officer. Like, that's what the issue is? A superior rank. Yeah. How weird is that? Like, a guy's a general. Yeah, like, we're not you know? at war. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. person ran a red light. Like, let's calm down. <laughs> I mean, I guess cops should be able to get better positions as they get better at their job, and they should get more prestige as they get more experience and knowledge. Yeah. Officer Rialto, California, now required to wear video cameras while on duty. See, it's right uh, in the middle, mm -hmm. and it's, so it's just like full-on GoPro that just records every time. One and year, the use of force have dropped 60%. Complaints have dropped 88%. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> wow. That's accountability, man. Yeah. It's all about accountability. That's exactly what that is, you know? It's not that... That's, being a cop is a tricky decision. To be the guy who decides how things get handled in times of stress, and that's your job. You do that every day. Yeah. You come in, people are screaming, wives and husbands are, you're worried you're going to get shot. Like, they're always worried they're going to get shot. Like, domestic violence cases especially. Can you imagine? You don't have anything to do with these crazy people. But the neighbor's lights are all on. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. People are screaming. They're throwing shit. And, you know, you're, you hear the guy say, I'm going to fucking kill you. And you're outside, and you're a cop. And you're like Jesus Christ. Here we go. Like that's your job. That's cool. that's a crazy job. It's hard for anybody, I think, to expect that people that go through that job on a daily basis are perfect, or that they should be held to the same standards as everybody else, as far as like their ability to tolerate bullshit. Because they, they 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 see too much. Yeah, that's a crazy job. It's a crazy job, and it's not a you know when people look at police brutality, you got to look at 
the cops too. Like, what are these guys being subjected to? It's not just that these cops are, are lashing out and, and attacking people. It's like, what's making them ramp up their, their violence? Are they just inherently violent? That's a real convenient way to look at it, to just decide they're just inherently violent. Yeah. And that they're assholes and bullies, and that's why they became cops in the first place. And that might be correct for some, but you also got to take into consideration what they're seeing on a daily basis. Their fucking job is to deal with the worst situations that people have to see every yeah. day. Every day. Bullets, car accidents, motorcycle wreck, violence, murder, suicide. Yeah, the worst pills, parts of humanity all day. The worst. Long. Liars, liars, thieves, yeah. rapists, all day. It's got to be overwhelming. And then for them to be, you know, in a situation with a person and the person is like, I don't have to listen to you. Oh, you don't, you fucking bitch. Yeah. Ah. Listen to yeah. this. Yeah. It's like they're so wound up. Yeah. They're always at like eight, you know. If you live in that world and you're constantly like dodging this and evading that and capturing this guy and pulling that guy off the street. and Fuck, man. What That's a- why it surprises me when when you see cops that are so young, Mm -hmm. when there's like a 21-year-old, 22-year-old cop, and you're like, that guy's going to be able to handle all this stress? Yeah. Like the domestic violence thing? Like he'd show up to a house, husband and wife are arguing, and it's like, that kid's probably had sex twice. (laughs) (laughs) And he's supposed to like know what to do during a... Yeah, I wonder if they have people that they specifically assign to those kind of cases that are like good at that shit. Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? But I would, that's like an Al Pacino role in Heat. Norman, can I talk to you? <laughs> you know, get the guy to the window and yeah. put the gun down, Norman. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of cops here. <laughs> you know, it would be like the guy who like slowly talks you off the ledge. Yeah. I bet in real life cop world though, it's like, what is it? Is it a murder? There's no specialists. Like, dude, I don't even do robbery. I'm not doing robbery. I'm over here. I'm doing violent crime. Yeah. Not, nothing petty. Like, no, they're cops. They show up where there's, you know, there's, like, vice departments, right? And they have, like, different mm-hmm. departments. But for the most part, they all deal with bullshit. That's yeah, what it's they like, do who's all day. closer to the crime? Yeah. Just get there and deal with it. Deal with nonsense all day. Deal with the worst of us. <laughs> <laughs> and every time they talk to people, the people are lying. Like, oh, most yeah. of the time, most of the time, people are talking to cops, they're lying. Yeah, I don't think I've ever talked to a cop when it hasn't been like I'm on the end of getting in trouble and uh-huh. I'm like, how do I get out of this right Exactly. Now? <laughs> I've never just been like, hey, officer, nice nice to see you today. I've never done that. That's funny. Yeah, that's a lot of people's interaction with cops on the street, man. That's a lot of people's, uh, if you think about it, remember that video, that kid was taking a video, the woman was beating him up mm-hmm. and uh, she was uh, she was screaming you know, at him and, and he was like, stop hitting me, please stop. And that's all he was doing. Mm-hmm. And she was saying that she was going to say that he sexually assaulted her. Yeah. Remember yeah. The, the other one that we showed, the, that uh, the, the old women stealing the, mm-hmm. the guy's yeah. beef stuff? Yeah. They've, the Reddit, guys at Reddit found her name and her Facebook and started going to her page. Oh, my God. And, and it's ridiculous because she's like, a, it looks like she's just a normal woman that just happened to be like stealing shit. Well, you know what? That's a weird thing about people's looks. There's like some sweetie pie looking people that are killers. Yeah. Ted Bundy. Yeah. Perfect example. Yeah. Yeah. I've met like, uh, M- there's a lot of MMA guys like that too. Like, you would never know. Jiu jitsu guys. There's a lot of jiu jitsu guys. Like, you would never know. You look at them, they just look like normal dudes. And they would, they could kill people. And it's just like, there's something about their head. Like, they have, it's not just their physical abilities, it's like their head. They have like a little, little something extra, a little mm. piece of weird, but they look like, you know, Opie, you know? <laughs> look like all American boy. Look like a total normal, sweet faced fella, you know? Meanwhile, they're just stone cold killers. Some old lady could be a dirty murderer. You know, yeah. you're looking at her on the beach, and she's like someone's Grammy. Like, where's your grandparents? Oh, they're over there by that tent. Oh, hi, Grammy. Hi, <laughs> that's her. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's a dirty, stinky thief. Yeah, stealing someone's tent, packing it up, and then she's done it before, obviously, because that guy came up to her. She wasn't surprised. You know, she was like she's playing, playing cool. it off. Yeah, like, well, this is ours. I'm pretty sure this is ours. Like, this is our stuff. That's so fucking... I mean, it, you know... I mean, it was a complicated tent. They got, like, fucking posts and shit, and they're folding everything up and putting yeah. it in bags and stuff. And this old dirty broad's just stealing. She probably has gotten away with that for the last 15 years. 
Yeah. After you hit a certain age, no one suspects you. Right. Yeah. Like that innocent old person's not going to steal <laughs> anything. Well, people become kleptos, and they don't even know why. Like, I had a girl that I was dating when when I was in high school that uh, had a bit of an issue at one point in time, and she was a very good person. She wasn't a bad person at all. She's not a, like a bad kid from a bad home, but she wanted something, and she didn't have the money, and she just took it, you know, and it was just this thing where, like, she did it a couple of times, and she got in trouble for it. She didn't get arrested, but she got caught. She had to give the stuff back. I don't remember. It wasn't wasn't anything monumental, but it was enough where she was trying to understand why she was doing this. Yeah. Like, I can't, I, I almost can't stop. Like, I go in the store, and there's something I want, and I know no one's looking, and I figure out a way to get it. And I'm like, that that's crazy. Like, that's stealing. But she is, it was like, when they say kleptomania, like, for some folks, it really is an issue. Like, they really can get obsessed with this idea of stealing something and they can't help it joey diaz used to do it all the allegedly all the time allegedly. When, we were, <laughs> when we were at the at like the airport would just be like he would just be stuffing hamburgers in his pockets and you're just like what the fuck are you doing? Is like, like don't worry about this brian and like he, or he'll just go and get to one of those little stands where they have like drinks and and, and popcorn and stuff and he's just putting stuff in his pockets like right in the open like not, because he's is just it like so more about it. the thrill it's not even like oh i need this thing is it like the adrenaline can i get away with it well let's say this about joey that was a long, was time, a long ago. time ago he's yeah. a different guy now <laughs> well, i'm saying like the girl at all anymore right. i don't know you know the girl was 17 at the time mm -hmm. um and like I said, she's not a bad person by any stretch of the imagination. She's very nice. She's very smart, too. She just had a thing. And the thing was she wanted to steal shit. <laughs> it just, and I don't think, you know, it could be a combination. First of all, when you're 17, you're essentially insane. Yeah. You know, I mean, you really are not sure what's going on. For the last couple of years, your body's been overwhelmed with hormones. And you're like, what is that? Like, why do I feel so different than I did, you know, just two or three years ago? And you're obsessed with girls, right? And girls are obsessed with boys. Mm -hmm. And so you just start fooling around, having sex, and it becomes like your whole life becomes obsessive when you're young. Like, and you're about to become an adult. And you're going to have to take care of yourself. And you're like, what? Nobody taught me shit. Yeah, I just want to fuck all day. <laughs> I'm fucked. I'm 17. I'm almost 18. Then I got to fend for myself. You know? And then graduation's out. And you, you take your deep breath. And you try to figure it out. Like, wow. What next? They're all crazy. Yeah. Everyone that age is crazy. So some of them steal clothes. And some of them sniff paint. And some of them, you know, whatever. Become people, cops that beat people. Yeah. It's <laughs> a little harder than... You can't be right. more than 17. How old do you have to be to be a cop? I think, it, I think 18. It should be 40. 18. If you can join the military at yeah. 18, you think... should be 40. Be... Should be 40 year old dudes that are yoked. <laughs> They're like hiring in Burbank cops right now. There's signs everywhere that says, I'm now hiring. I'm sure. It's probably a tough job. It's probably tough to get people to do because, uh, you know, I don't think most of us have the perspective to understand what they have to go through. So I think a lot of people also treat cops with like disdain. It's kind of cool to treat cops with disdain. But that's all well and good. But if the shit hit the fan, you'd be fucking happy there were cops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember that North Hollywood shootout? Remember that shit? Oh, yeah, with the autom fully mm -hmm. automatic weapons. Do you remember that, Brian? Oh, yeah, that was like a video game. Dude, we were on uh, news radio. It was on the set of news radio, and I, I forget who told us it was happening, but we all gathered up in this break room to watch this, and we were watching this on the TV, someone's office or something. I don't remember where we were watching, but we were like, this is fucking crazy. Like, we were all holding our hands on our heads like, what are we looking at? This dude's armed to the tits. He's got... Are you showing it? Yeah. Pull it up on the screen so we can see it too. This dude is armed to the tits. He's got bulletproof everything on. They got a van stuffed with bullets and ammo and rifles and shit. And he's just fucking cops up. Jesus. This is a different guy, Brian, isn't it? The North Hollywood shootout yeah, is what you want. Yeah, is this, this is, it? Yeah, this is North Hollywood shootout. Oh, this is the end. There's, that's where they just shot him. This is the end. When there was some, there were some videos before of him like fully armed up, giant machine guns and shit shooting at cops, yeah. and these cops had pistols. And their bullets are bouncing yeah. off of them. Yeah, I mean the cops had like standard, you know, officer issue pistols, and this fucking guy had like the craziest rifles money can buy. Yeah, machine guns and shit, and just these two dudes held all these cops at bay. 
This is the same one where they were trying to rob a bank, right? Mm -hmm. That's that one, yeah. Yep. Yeah. But see, if it wasn't for cops, then what? Those guys do that again next week, and they do it again the week after, and then who stops them? Who stops them? Yeah, you know? we would not be able to. Exactly. They're sort of going house to house. I'd like, I have an iPhone I can throw at you or what something. What do you do? Yeah. I mean, if someone's that crazy that they're willing to do something like that, who knows where that guy's limits are? Uh-huh. That guy could easily just go door to door and gun people down. And how Anybody many friends he has yeah. that are willing? Imagine if it was 100 of those guys. Yes, exactly. Out in the street. Exactly. That's what you got to really worry about. What you got to really worry about is people that don't think you need a military or don't think you need law enforcement, you're really kind of underestimating the evil that human beings are capable of. We've just been in a nice place here in America for a few hundred years. Yeah. Pretty sweet as far as world history goes. Like it's invading violence. Pretty sweet. Like one of the best spots ever. Like a solid 200 plus years of nobody coming over here and fucking us up. Like a few little baby attacks, but nothing in comparison to anything that any other empire had to go through over like, you know, the course of its its reign. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think about how many like human beings, how many different countries there are in this country, and then that we have military bases in like 100 plus of those countries... You know, that's yeah. those numbers are crazy. That's oh, just, yeah. just stopping and thinking about how many of us there are is nuts. But if there wasn't a military and some crazy fucks like those North Hollywood guys I know. gathered up together and decided to start taking shit over, what would you do? People are capable of that. That's it's a very unfortunate but it's a realistic aspect. Like it's a realistic subject. It needs to be breached. It's very unfortunate that people are capable of things like that, but they are. And to not plan on it and to not be prepared in case it happens, there's a lot of civilizations that don't exist anymore because of that. Yeah, you you get used to the safety you have. Mm-hmm. And then you go to like you know a third world country and you're like, oh, things aren't as together over there. <laughs> and there's like groups of people who are fighting other groups within. Like that could never happen here. Unless they got a boat. going at each other? Unless they got over here. See, anything can happen here once it happens here. Yeah. You know, how, how, how quickly would they be able to tighten it down? I don't know. I would hope quickly. I would hope quickly. But, like, when, when people look at things like... When you, when you look at things like be, the bad aspects of, um, of the military or the bad aspects of war... And the bad aspects of police enforcement, law enforcement, the bad aspects of, you know, people being horrible and, and, and police brutality in those situations. I think we people are tending to go in only one direction with the idea. Like they're only looking at the violence that these cops are doing to civilians. Mm-hmm. They're not looking at like, what are we asking these people to do? What are we asking these normal people to do for $40,000 a year? And how much of an assurance do we have that these people are of sound character or they can get through that gig? Yeah, I know there's some screening processes, but how thorough is it really? And how much do we really know about the impact of day-to-day violence, day-to-day bullshit that these people have to deal with? It sounds like the craziest job ever. That's Imagine I, if you had to be a vice cop. No, <coughs> but I would think that I would want that GoPro on me at all times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that would. I think that's the most important thing for cops nowadays i think they yeah. need that i think i think that'd be a perfect way to police the police and have help the cops at the same time imagine yeah. starting in a bad neighborhood too i'd want to start in the suburbs i'd want to <laughs> yeah. go from right. burbank <laughs> to watts i'm like just let me do a couple traffic stops before i'm like involved in a shootout right yeah, there was a guy yeah. um that i used to do uh, taekwondo with that he got reassigned he wanted to get reassigned to a more urban area and I go, why do you want to do that? It's like, there's more action. <sighs> I was like, more action? Wow. Whoa. I would want to start off like small town, like where there's two cops for the whole city, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, this dude, this dude wanted to be where the shit was going down. He, yeah. he genuinely enjoyed it. He, there was a, he, was a, he was an odd duck. He was like uh, this weird sort of hard ass cop guy who, uh, who liked to fight. But he was a really nice guy. Like, as a cop, he was really nice. Did he have, like, a good sense for justice? He wasn't, like, a power no, guy? He was, or... a, he was. it was weird. He was a sweet guy, but it seemed like he would, like, look forward <laughs> to someone doing something that he could correct them on. Yeah. 
You know, like if you didn't, if you didn't do anything wrong, he was like a super nice guy. But it was weird being friends with this dude while I was like a young teenager because I always like thought of cops as like, oh shit, I'm gonna get arrested. Mm-hmm. You know, just think of all the people that I knew that were dirtbags. Like, oh, I gotta get out of here. There's a cop. You know, but he was um, he was older than me, but it was it was a, a weird sort of a relationship because um, he was older than me, but I was better at martial arts than him. So I'd beat his ass, <laughs> but he was a cop. And then he'd arrest you. <laughs> well, he didn't arrest me, but you know, I would like, I would even take it easy on him sometime in sparring because he was a cop <laughs> because I would just think like, I do not want this dude like developing a grudge, you know? Oh yeah. Cause people could develop a grudge, you know? And especially like the mar- like sparring sessions there's there's like sparring sessions for striking and then sparring sessions for grappling sparring sessions for grappling are way safer so you can go really really go at it hard but sparring sessions for for striking they're really dangerous because people get knocked out all the time so there's like a certain amount of respect that you have to give each other and you have to not hit each other that hard and some guys just don't play by that some guys are just it all goes out the window and they start winging shots at you and next thing you know you're in a, a melee like it happens all the time wow. where a sparring session turns into an all out fight it happens all the time so you don't want to do that with a cop <laughs> you know and especially uh, a cop that knows how to fight pretty good too see the John Jones thing I yeah it was know. crazy <laughs> man John Jones and Daniel Cormier got in this huge scrap at a press conference it was ridiculous oh, wow. John Jones uh, got in Daniel Cormier's face put his forehead on Daniel Cormier's forehead and Daniel Cormier grabbed John Jones by the neck and pushed him away. And John dropped his belt. And then it was just bodies colliding. Wow. Know? And John uh, immediately, I guess, you know, there's a, it's a wild scramble. But John was on top. And, and John was like, I took you down so quick. Within seven seconds, you were on your back. And you're <laughs> like, oh, no. Like the shit talking just escalated yeah, yeah. to a totally different level. And John Jones put out a video that said, uh, you, you suck, you're so weak. When I got a hold of you, you felt so weak. Like it's really, and then he deleted the video, which is really interesting. See, this is what happened. That uh, poor guy in the middle. <laughs> yeah, that guy, like, there, this is just a collide. Oh, my God. Pile of and bodies. Dan is on vacation. He wasn't even there. Yeah. All this. <laughs> yeah, this can't happen. You can't do that. This is real bad for the sport. It's real bad. It's real bad for public perception. It's a, a weapon to be used against MMA. You know, it's unfortunate. What you got to have, everybody should have, is uh, a no contact uh-huh. policy. Unless guys agree to hug, you know, you agree to shake hands and hug, you should have a no contact policy. And anybody who clearly violates that no contact policy gets fined. You know, that. Some guys can deal with it, that getting in each other's face. But when you have a situation like this, you know, you got to have to have a no contact policy with those guys. Yeah, because like the weigh ins, they're always doing the forehead stuff and like getting yeah. in people's face. That's like. I don't know, man. I think it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And some of it's gamesmanship, but it's just so bad for the image of the sport. Is that starting to happen more often? No, it's pretty rare. Okay. It's pretty rare, but it, that's a big high profile fight. Yeah. I mean, like Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate, they got head to head in each other's faces and it was. Pretty hot, right? Yeah, it's sexy. <laughs> pretty hot. I saw where I saw where <laughs> you were looking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they were professional about it. They didn't do anything about it. These guys were not professional. Like yeah, it was like immediate. Yeah, you can't do that. You know, you can't grab each other and fucking slap it. You know, and if you say, "Hey, I don't want to headbutt you, man," you know, or but th- nobody wants to give ground. You know, they just they don't. You know, they don't want anybody getting any psychological advantage. And so they 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 have to show each other like they'll fuck I'll fucking fight you right here bitch yeah. and then you know that's when shit like this happens it's like they just have to treat it you got this is a like the importance of that not happening is huge it's huge there's a it's just such a negative connotation attached to what that is that's just violence the difference between that kind of violence and the violence of a sport is the violence of a sport is everyone's agreeing to this scenario. You're agreeing to train for X amount of weeks. You're going to fight for X amount of rounds. You're going to fight this guy. He weighs what you weigh. Everybody prepares. You meet at this day, and you compete. And it's a very dangerous form of competition, and yes, it is fighting as a competition, but it's not violence the same way that that is. That's a street fight. That's a, yeah. that's a world champion mixed martial arts fighter, and 
an Olympic wrestler and they're street fighting. That's bad for everybody. That's bad for wrestling. That's bad for MMA. That's bad for sports. It's fun for people to watch. World you know? star. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's part of me. I have two, two ways of looking at it. Part of me is like, that's bad for the sport. But part of me is like, how do I feel about it, though? Does it bum me out? No. No, it doesn't make me upset. I'm not upset. I, I'm looking forward to watching this fight even more now. Yeah. Look, I, would I have liked it to not happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. I wish that they were very professional about this. They don't need to do that. I, that fight's going to be amazing no matter what happens. But since it did happen and I got to see it, I'm like, whoa, I'm not going to pretend that that's not fun. You know, I'm not going to pretend that that didn't make everybody way more excited about that fight because it fucking for sure did. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good to do. But... It was fun to watch, and <laughs> more people are going to be excited about the fight. I mean, there's, that's the catch-22. That's There's no real black or white about this. You know, as a, a representative of the sport, I absolutely wish it didn't happen. As a, a person who cares a lot about the future of the sport and the, the public's perception, which I think is already a little skewed. I think there's a lot of people that aren't fans that like to look at the, the people that fight in MMA as just barbarians. But there's a, there are a lot of nice guys that fight in the UFC, and they're some of the nicest athletes you'll ever meet. That's a fact. So part of me gets bummed out when I see shit like that. But part of me is like, look, they're going to fight eventually anyway. Yeah. So they fought a little here. Yeah, they get they're a just little, being passionate. Just get a little taste. <laughs> get a little taste. I don't know. It's going to be a wild-ass fight, though. When is that fight? Uh, it's a good question. Um, it's, uh, I think it's September 27th in Vegas. Mm. Is that it, or is the weekend of the 27th? Uh, either way, it's on, like, Donkey Kong. Sun. It's going to be exciting. But it's unfortunate, man. It's unfortunate. So as far as now, they didn't get in any trouble? I don't know. I mean, Dana's on vacation. <laughs> right. I mean, I, re I read that, that there is that they were going to get in trouble. That's, yeah. Um, that they, the, there's something in the contract, you know, that you can't do that shit. No well, press there's conference a, fighting. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's a thing that says uh, there will be consequences. Right. That's a statement, the official statement. There will be consequences. It's almost scarier than yeah, yeah. saying what's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds very vampire. We will vampire. contact you. It's very vampire-like. <laughs> yeah. There will be consequences to your actions. You don't get any of the headphones to wear during the fights. Have you been watching The Strain? <laughs> You've been watching no. The Strain? Uh, the Guillermo del Toro show on mm -hmm. FX? It's fucking great, man. It's great. Have I've been waiting. For, no, I've been waiting until these five or six air. Yeah, there's four out now. Okay. This is the fourth one. Just aired on Sunday. It's fucking fun. Because the billboard with the thing going into the eye, <laughs> I was like, I'm in. I don't even know what this is, but I'm absolutely doing this. <laughs> so gross. I read the book, and I don't remember the worms from the book. Maybe I just don't remember. Maybe I have to go back and read it again. I didn't remember that part, but I remember the book being really entertaining for like three quarters of the way through. Uh-huh. Like, really fun in the beginning, too. It's a good story. It's, a, it's an interesting story. And they're doing a great job with the uh, the miniseries. It's really good, man. It's, like, really ropes you in. It's fun. I need to try <laughs> I just gave up on the leftovers. Dude, I, I love horror movies and shows. Like, we need more of that shit. Like, more more zombie shit. More, uh, you know, more vampire shit. It's fun. Horror, horror movies have, like, taken a big dive. I don't know, if you go back to like the 1950s, look at those black and white movies mm. that were super popular back then. There were so many horror movies, man. Oh, yeah. The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Remember those? That was a good one. But now, like, now there, the demand is so much more for like there to be a real story instead of like, this monster attacks a village, <laughs> and then a hot girl gets her clothes ripped off and you see her tits. You're like, that was an amazing film. <laughs> Dude, we should do a mystery science theater uh, type thing where we watch Creature from the Black Lagoon because oh, yeah. it is so ridiculous. First of all, it's so obvious they're in a swimming pool. <laughs> I mean, it's not a fucking lagoon at all. Yeah, it's like some back lot swimming pool. Yeah, why they is put there cement there. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> the fucking the the creature was pretty dope for the time. Mm -hmm. Like it was like just a really cool scuba diving outfit, essentially. Yeah, you know, and the, this this weird freaky lizard like scuba diving outfit they put this this guy in and he would swim in the swimming pool and capture the girl <laughs> it's so great it's so bad it's so bad that it's awesome like it's so bad it's exciting when you watch it here it is out of the monk and mystery <laughs> of a hundred million years ago up from the depths of unknown waters 
comes a creature to confound science and terrorize the world. <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. It just grabbed this guy by the head. It was the worst acting job anybody's ever done, ever. Look at this. Shocking. Perfected three dimension. Ooh, it's 3D. I didn't even know it was 3D. Yeah, it was one of those where you got your glasses in the Sunday paper and they would play it on the TV. Remember that? Wow, no. That's cool. I do remember that. The bridge between fish and the land animal. It hasn't changed in millions of years. But here. Even the music. Here we have a clue to an answer. Starring Richard Carlson, grimly adventuring underwater in the depths of the mighty Amazon. Lovely Julia Adams, her beauty allure even to the man beast from the dawn of time. Fucking. <laughs> With Richard Denning, whose scientific passion turned to the fury of revenge. You'll see the most amazing underwater photography that the screen has ever known. Wow, this is incredible. Look out, that's so obvious, that's a pool. <laughs> this is. There's not a ripple in that water. Look at it. Four men dead so far. We are staying until we get, or until somebody else gets killed. <laughs> Ropes. <laughs> he just dives in the water with her. Deep, deep, deep. Into the waters of his domain. This is hilarious. He's just gonna drown this chick. I know, she's dead already. What's he doing? Is he making out with her? How does she keep her from drowning? Rape cave. Oh, does she have a scuba outfit? Amazing in three dimension. Creature from the Black Lagoon. They should do a remake of this one. The guy just, some monster in a creek. Just grabs all these great. women and rapes them. And yeah, you could come up with a better story, right? You <laughs> yeah. could just say it was like some genetic experiment that oh, escaped yeah. from yeah. Some, some dude who was really rich in Florida from cocaine. He hired a bunch of scientists <laughs> right. to try to make lizard soldiers. <laughs> right? This, that could totally be a story. They could do that. Creature from the black... And it'd be in Miami. Fucking people up in Miami. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> you need the hot girls to kill. Yeah. We're always swimming around. Well, you, it needs at least them to run. You, you don't have to kill them. Yeah. But if they run... very slow motion. Yeah. If they run, and the titties are bouncing while they're being chased by a lizard man. That's what you could count on with all those Jason movies, where you're like, in the first scene, he's going to be walking through some camp, and there's going to be a bunch of girls going like, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Let's just take off Can all our take, clothes. It's very hot. Yeah. <laughs> just nipple the nibble. Yeah. Let's make out for warmth. Yeah, that, okay. that genre has kind of... <laughs> <laughs> that genre has kind of gone away a bit, right? Mm -hmm. Has it? I mean, those were big movies. Oh, I know. Halloween. Yeah. Friday the 13th. All those movies. Those were big movies, man. Like, you get fired up. Friday the 13th. Freddy yeah. Krueger. Even when they were bad, they were good. Yeah. There was... If you could ensure that a couple girls would be having a pillow fight and a tit would pop out and then an axe murderer shows up. Yeah. You're talking about that for two months with your friends if you're a teenager. Yeah. Especially if it's like Jason because he's, he's undead or whatever yeah. he is. Nobody knows what he is. Yeah, he was killed and then came back somehow. Yeah, they fucking run him over, they shoot him, he rises and somehow another finds a way to get you. And it didn't even matter back then. Like, well, we have to explain to the viewers <laughs> how he came back. They're like, well, that's what those like four pairs of tits are for. Because yeah. immediately they'll forget. Yeah. No, and then he just goes on a rampage for two hours. It was a different world back then. Scream movies were good, I thought. Scream? Like, yeah. 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 Those were good. Yeah. Those are fun. Yeah. They took a lot from those that old school kind of yeah. horror slasher film thing. Yeah, this what bums me out is the lack of monster movies. That's what bums me out. Like whenever a good monster movie comes out, I get like super excited. Like this is gonna be fun. Yeah. But there's so few. There's so few. Like Godzilla. It was alright. You know, it was fun. Was it was really well done? Like the Godzilla itself was amazing, mm -hmm. but there this is just one motherfucker, the main dude who survives more close calls in this goddamn movie than anybody in the history of monster movies. I mean, it's so ridiculous. Like <laughs> everywhere he is, everybody dies and he escapes, and everybody dies and he escapes, and everybody right. dies and he escapes. Like fuck, man. You know, like by the time the movie's over, by the end of the movie, like you've used up all your get out of jail free cards, dude. Like yeah, you're just officially ridiculous. Like he's the guy that. Landed 
lands in between the paws when yep. he goes boom, and he's like, "Oh, that was a close one." The tail slams down. He's like, oh, "God, it was like four feet away." Thank God. Exactly. I mean, it's just it's there's so many cut the shit scenes, but what they can do now, as far as the special effects, it makes it worth it. it makes it worth seeing because mm-hmm. even if the story is goofy as shit. The monsters are insane. Like the way Godzilla looks now. Holy fuck! Didn't did, did you you watched it and didn't like it? Was that you? I never saw it. Or Ari? Ari was like, yeah, Ari he hated, hated it. it. Of course he did. He's like, oh, totally don't watch that movie ever. I'm like, what's wrong? <laughs> and he just had all these problems with the storyline. I'm like, Ari, it's a giant lizard <laughs> destroying <laughs> Japan or whatever. It might be a god. Yeah, they always do that in these movies. It might be a god. Dum, dum, dum. Yeah. They might be gods. What was the one with the giant robot warrior ones Ugh. that came out? Oh, Transformers? No, no. no, no it no. was... Um, oh, uh, yeah, Pacific, Pacific Rim. Rim. I like that one. Did oh. you really? Because it was just <laughs> giant robots going at it. It was like watching a video game. Yeah, it was cool. That part was cool, but the the uh, the, the human parts were... Yeah, horrible. Yeah. Well, it, it really felt like I was watching someone like took a comic book mm-hmm. and just didn't do any rewrites at all. Yeah. <laughs> and just slapped it together. It was very comic book-like, which, you know... I think in some cases it's fine, but the comic books that they're doing now, comic book movies, they do so well. Mm-hmm. Like Captain America, you know, it's a silly story, but it's a good like they do a really good job. Like they make these movies are fun to watch. They do yeah. a great job. So like if you go back to like really clunky sort of like stuff like that, like the the Pacific thing, it just it's just it was too clunky for me. Does that make sense? Yeah, story like story wise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that I didn't even. I was like, I want to go watch a movie and turn my brain off. And I'm like, what better thing than watch like 200 foot tall robots yeah. destroy each other? But there was a scene where this like guy and a girl were in love with each other or something. And I was like, what am I watching here? What kind of? Yeah, that's where you're like, oh, bathroom time yeah. or what? cigarette or something. What is what is this robot fight thing? What are you guys doing? What's happening here? Where's the monsters? Yeah, show me some monsters, bitch. I hated the acting. I I, I was yeah. I couldn't even watch it. Yeah, but it seems like they it was like a choice though. It seemed very comic book like, right? Didn't it? <clears throat> Almost yeah. like they they were going for like a certain a certain feel. Yeah, it had that like comic book video game feel. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't even remember who was in it. No. Like the human beings that were in it. Yeah, I remember I got really mad when I finally watched that movie because everyone told me it was good. That fucking Tom Cruise movie is good. The the latest one? <clears throat> yeah, The Edge of Tomorrow. What's that one about? It's a science fiction movie. It's mm-hmm. really good, man. It's really good. <clears throat> I, I mean, I, I said it's really good, and a bunch of people criticized me online. How dare you? But I, <laughs> I think that those people, <laughs> your taste of movie sucks. Listen, man, it's just my taste, okay? You can't say it sucks. I like the, We like different things. But uh, I understand if you think the movie sucks to you, but to me, I thought it was excellent. It, and if it wasn't Tom Cruise, I think if it was some other dude that didn't carry a lot of baggage... I think it probably been rated a lot higher than it was. I think one of the reasons why people uh, are like, oh, the movie wasn't that good. I really think it's because it's a Tom Cruise movie. I think like Tom Cruise's movies, people think they're good. They're pretty good. That's pretty good. But if it was like another actor in the same role, like they wouldn't, it wouldn't be judged the same way. I think. I think people just think that guy's so wacky. Yeah, his reputation precedes anything else he can do from yeah. now on. He, but he's he's so he's so good. He's like a he's really, good, really actor. good actor. Yeah, he's fucking really good in this movie. Like you buy it. Like uh, I don't want to give away the plot, but it's a, it's a pretty ridiculous plot, and he sells it. Like the idea behind it is pretty crazy, and he sells it. It's a yeah, good people, fucking movie. People forget like there's a reason he became the biggest movie star in the world. Yeah, it's he's cute. Like, it's got a cute face. Yeah, he's he's talented. <laughs> he's talented as fuck. He just happens to be insane. Yeah. <laughs> I think that everybody who's really good at that gig is insane. I think that's an insane person's hobby or an insane person's profession. Yeah. You know, the really good one. I mean, you can contain your insanity, but... <sighs> that's like the difficult trick, it seems, for celebrities now is to not let it out that they're <laughs> crazy. Because there's so many... Then you could just like, oh, I'm going to tweet something. Yep. And people are like, did you know Shia LaBeouf is out of his mind? <laughs> Did you read all those tweets? And it was, that's all been there. Yeah. And then he's just we like, just oh. didn't know. Like, imagine if there were social media in the 50s. Oh, Like, good the God. things Humphrey Bogart 
<laughs> would be railing against, you know? Yeah, right. Like Cary Grant's like homophobic. I didn't know that. Yeah, all the the racist shit that would be yeah, said. All the DUIs that would be publicized. Oh. All the yeah. <laughs> domestic abuse. Like who knows what those people were into back then. What is that guy's name from the early nineteen hundreds? Fatty Arbuckle. Yeah. Remember that whole story? No. Uh, Fatty Arbuckle apparently um they put a a bottle or a glass up a woman's vagina and it killed her. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Something ha let me yeah, let me pull it up. Fatty and he was uh he was acquitted, but he never worked again. It's on the screen. Wow. What's that, Jamie? It's up on the screen for you. Fatty Arbuckle. His name was Roscoe. Roscoe Arbuckle. Yeah. Um <clears throat> he uh Oh my god. Yeah. The woman died four days later. She'd fallen ill at a party, and she died. Whoa. And uh, he was accused by um, this woman's uh, acquaintance of accidentally killing the woman. And after the first two trials, which resulted in hung juries, Arbuckle was acquitted in the third trial and received a formal written apology from the jury. Despite Arbuckle's acquittal, the scandal has most overshadowed, mostly overshadowed his legacy as a pioneering comedian. Following the trials, his films were banned and he was publicly ostracized. Although the ban on his films was lifted within a year, Arbuckle only worked sparingly through the 1920s. He later worked as a film director under the alias William Goodrich. He was finally able to return to acting, making two short real comedies in 1932 for Warner Brothers. He died in his sleep of a heart attack at the age of 46. Whoa. Reportedly, on the same day, he signed a contract with Warner Brothers to make a feature film. Ooh, that's scary shit. Ooh. It doesn't say here what he did. Like, it doesn't get into graphic detail about it. It just said she had fallen ill. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if they... How old is that story? Um, It's from 1921. Yeah, I guess they. I don't. I doubt they printed stuff like that back then. Yeah, like anything that alluded to sexual, whatever. Just like yeah. oh, she was ill. Like they wouldn't even use the word pregnant. They'd be like expecting. And they're saying that he wasn't that big, but what what the charge was that he had killed her with his weight while savagely raping her. It says, the, the newspapers Whoa. of the day reveled in the glory, rumored details. Juries found little evidence that Arbuckle was in any way connected with her death. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, imagine how many more of those stories about those like old legends that were like considered pristine stars. Mm. If there was a TMZ back then. Yeah, there's two. There's a couple different uh, versions. Like his, they, uh, this one website has um, one person's version, and then the uh, Fatty Arbuckle version. There are two different versions of what exactly happened. You way, no, no boy, no, my friend. That's Damn. fucked. Yeah, how did we get on the subject of Fatty Arbuckle? <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, it's because Tom Cruise is considered crazy. Oh, yeah. And we're like, there probably were a bunch of crazy. There's always been crazy celebrities. Yeah, that's why it was. Yeah, there's now we always just been know. crazy everything. People are crazy. It's just that people have <coughs> done a really good job of hiding their crazy until they shut their doors. Yeah. They would get home, good night, take care, bye bye, shut that door, and, and then just put up a put on yeah. a vinyl suit with a zipper, and they're like, let's get to work. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that ball gag in place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go down to their basement, fucking chain themselves up. Yeah, people are crazy. We're starting to see it. It's coming out more. It's going to be great when people want to go back to privacy when they want to cherish their privacy. It's not going to happen. He'd have to go somewhere like the Big Island of Hawaii. No internet. There's no internet? No, I mean, you could you would live there with no internet. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, yeah. there is internet on the Big Island. It's great. But if you really wanted to... First of all, think about the fact that there's internet on the Big Island of fucking Hawaii. <laughs> it takes five hours to get there on a plane, right? You fly through the air for five hours, and someone laid fiber across the ocean floor that is that length. I mean, that's how it works, right? I think so. I have no idea. Yeah. Isn't that how it works? Mm -hmm. Like, there has to be a direct line somewhere. There's underwater lines. There's underwater lines, son. How? Exactly. Yeah. 
How did they do that? The Pacific Ocean. So they just like we're tossing this in there, and let's hope like a shark doesn't gnaw on it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google how do they get internet in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Call AOL, dude. It's one it's one of the first things that people ask. Let's see what they say. How does Hawaii get internet? Yahoo Answers. The internet is provided via a 10,000-mile submarine and terrestrial fiber optic cable connecting the state's six major islands, which is owned and operated by Pacific Lightnet. Wow. 10,000 miles, dude. So there are, like, cables connecting all the continents. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. That's how... uh, Yeah, that's crazy. And if you... It's like... Think about that. Like... What part of that most people don't know? Like that that part we don't know. Like most people are like, wait a minute, it's all a wire. There's wires everywhere. Like every, <laughs> people don't think of that. You don't think of that. Like you don't think there's like a wire that goes across the ocean to England, and that's you how just, you're doing the internet you think it's with like England. Signals flying through yeah. the air. <laughs> the people building railroads were like, this is impressive. <laughs> right. Like we link this city to that one with all this steel. Right. Yeah. And now it's like there's a cable where I can just like pick up a thing. And send a thing. Yeah, and just type a thing. And watch a video. Yeah, screw you, train. Well, Takes that's, two weeks. <laughs> that's why it gets really squirrely when people start talking about, like, um, when you start talking about, like, videos that you can and can't watch in other countries. Like, why can't I watch this in South Africa? Like, why can't, how come this is a, it's because the pipe, like, they don't have agreement with various pipes. Yeah. I mean, that must be it, right? Music licensing also, mostly, and things like that. Yeah, yeah, music licensing, and I'm sure also, like, that there's certain places like they don't want to waste their bandwidth on a product that's not available in your country. So. I'm surprised terrorists just haven't gone after these lines yet. That seems like shh. <laughs> Why are you giving them great ideas, bro? Dude, you just gave it away. Oh my god, you're so bad for America. <laughs> now Al Qaeda is building a submarine to go down no, to the Pacific. It's not Al Qaeda anymore. It's ISIS. You got to keep up on your bad oh, that's guys. That's right. ISIS. Didn't they change it from ISIS again? I do not know. Well, if they were smart, they would, since I know about it. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say once I know about your organization, it's no longer secret. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, I, I need to... I made, I made a mistake on the last episode I was on when I saw the video of uh, a, a Israeli uh, hitting a Palestinian kid. Remember that? Where mm-hmm. I was talking about the kid. I guess this, there's just a lot of videos that they're just saying they're Israeli and, and they're not. They're just trying, like, there's people on Yeah, that team. that was a real video, but it was um, two other uh, Arab kids. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. Israeli. But, no. So all these people... Uh, angry right. Jews got on my case. Well, we're, <laughs> we're, we're sorry, angry Jews, you sweeties. Angry Jew sweeties. But uh, I think there's some sort of a ceasefire right now, right? Isn't that the idea? Mm-hmm. That's Unless it's already ended. Imagine if we were going to war with Mexico. Better not. But think about it. Like, that's essentially what's going on. Like if where, yeah. where you look at where Israel is and you look at Gaza, if... That we, we're going to war with Mexico. That would be what it would be like. Like us going back and forth and rockets from Mexico flying into San Antonio and we're like, what the fuck? Right. That's real. Like that's really what it would be like. Yeah, like they would like destroy a 7-Eleven in El Paso and then we would just like bomb all of Mexico City <laughs> yeah. for like three straight days. Well, that's why the people in Israel, one of the things about people in Israel is those motherfuckers love to party. Yeah. I had a friend who was a kickboxing instructor. I went over his house once for dinner, and uh, dude was playing the bongos, and his wife was dancing, his kids were dancing, and they were all cooking, and I was like, wow, this is crazy. And uh, he's like, uh, this is, you know, how we do it in Israel. He goes, uh, you never know. One day you die, you know? So today, when we're alive, party, party, party. And he was, like, playing the bongo drums and all happy. And I was like, wow, that's a perspective you only get when you've, you've been involved in that that sort of hellish existence like he i believe he was in the military for the israeli army i think it's mandatory actually for everyone yeah but uh you know and he was a he was an interesting guy but always like big smile on his face and very happy and that was his explanation i go you know how come you guys are always so happy like um, when i meet someone who's that like exuberant that was his explanation you never know you know, you're over there. It's just like death, like bombings, something always terrible. You never know. Everyone could die. 
So it shows you how, party party. how different life with like Israelis and Palestinians are. Because like, there's no way the Palestinians are partying like that. <laughs> That's a good point. You think they'd party twice as hard? <laughs> yeah. Because like they're like, look, we're really living under like at any moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's a dark situation, man. It's, it really is. It's very dark. <clears throat> like I asked my parents, they're from Lebanon, my parents. So like they grew up in around all that, you know. They were like Christian, you know, so they they just got out of there. They're like we need to get out of here. But every time I'd ask them about it, they would just like I'm like, "What do you think about what's going on in Israel and Gaza now and all this stuff?" And they just look at me like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "What do you think's going to happen?" And they're like, "The same thing that's always going to happen. It's they're going to keep fighting and it's never going to end." Like they just look at it like it's not even worth talking about. That's it's like, yeah, it's really like dark, and you're just like, good lord. Like they just got so used to it, like growing up that like war is a thing. Like I went to Lebanon when I was 13, like to go vi- like go back to the homeland kind of thing, and like you're in the southern parts of the country, and and I'd never seen anything like this growing up in the suburbs of L.A. But like you're sitting in a village, and then there's like a guy tending like cattle. There's like goats, and then five minutes later, a tank just drives through a dirt road in a village no one bats an eye no one but meanwhile i'm like you know just pointing i'm like that's a tank and they're like yeah that happens like two three times a day like israeli tanks and lebanese tanks and there's soldiers with fully automatic weapons walking through towns and that's just like a normal part of life well have you ever done a gig that's on like a, a military town no Whenever you do, uh, anytime uh, you're on the road, like if you're near Camp Pendleton or Fort Bragg or any mm-hmm. of these like military bases, like <clears throat> if you have a gig and we're nearby, then you hang out there for a day. You're gonna see like military trucks. Yeah, you're gonna see you know camoed up jeeps and Humvees and all these different troops like constantly moving back and forth, left and right. Like if you're close to that, you see it all the time. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird if you're not used to it. You're like, wait a minute, yeah, wait a minute. that's a killing machine. Yeah, that's what a tank is. That's all it's good for. That's what it was doing. It was looking for trouble. No, I mean, to like find if there is any trouble. Can you imagine if you saw that tank and then all of a sudden fucking alarms start going off and the shit starts flying and you're sitting there like real close to this tank well, that's getting shot at? That happened when we were like, we, were sl- we went to sleep in the village that night. <clears throat> it was the night before we went back up to, to the city in Beirut. And like my younger brother and I just heard these distant like noises and we like asked my mom like what are those noises and she said no don't worry it's nothing don't worry about it and the next day we were like so what were those noises like you wouldn't tell us and she's like those were bombs going off like five miles away from us Whoa. yeah so it was like terrorists bombing each other five miles away from us <sighs> yo and you're like 13 year old kid and you're like, I like grew up in a suburb of L.A. where the, it's just it couldn't be safer. Like six cops will pull you over for smoking a cigarette. And five miles away, it's like people are destroying each other. Wow. It's, it really helped like shape my perspective of what, it, what it's like to live in America and grow up in America. Because that could have been me. Like I could have like lived there. And maybe who knows if I would have gotten to age 30, 31, 32, you know? Yeah. That's absolutely true. We're all stupid lucky. Oh yeah, that we landed on this spot. Because you, you could have landed anywhere. You could be in the Congo right now, going, "Oh, what? Well, how do I get out yeah. of this? How do I get rid of this Ebola? <laughs> <laughs> Is that come to the armpit? <laughs> yeah, they Is get those, hits? the big like uh, like big <clears throat> buboes or what they call them, like the bubonic plague. That's where that term comes from. They get these like, giant. Oh, it's like blood or something like that. Like your Cis. skin. Yeah, your your Cis. your lymph nodes or your like, they swell up with all. Oh, There's some people I've read that are scary. immune to it. Me. The bubonic <laughs> plague. I'm immune to everything, bro. Hemp powder, bro. You can't yeah. fuck with me, bro. There's Take like an tri- alpha brain. tribal guys that like it goes through so much that like the bubonic plague, Ebola, all these things. They like, they get it and then nothing happens. Wow, that's cool genetics, but you have to be a tribal guy. Right. Probably have to. <laughs> it's probably you just get a little bit of Ebola every day, you know, and develop an immunity mm-hmm. to it. No, I think it's a hemorrhagic virus, right? Isn't it one of those? Um, I think it's one of those ones that makes you bleed. Um, is it the same one that like liquefies your insides? 
yeah. something bad something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. Liquefied. Not good. Sense. And they just sent some. They just sent someone to America, right? Two people to Atlanta. Yeah, it's a hemorrhagic fever. It's a human disease caused by the Ebola virus. Symptoms typically start two to three weeks after two days to three weeks after contracting the virus with a fever, sore throat, muscle pains, and headaches. Typically, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea follow along with the decreased functioning of the liver and kidneys. At this point, some people begin to have bleeding problems. The virus may be acquired upon contact with blood or bodily fluids of an infected animal, commonly monkeys or fruit bats. So somebody fucked a bat or a monkey, <laughs> and that's how we got Ebola, most likely. Yeah. Somebody got super crazy and fucked a monkey or a bat. It's unnaturally transmitted through the air. Fruit bats are believed to carry and spread the virus without being affected. Hmm. Once human infection occurs, the disease may spread between people as well. Male survivors may be able to transmit the disease via semen ugh, for nearly two months. Wow. In order to make the diagnosis, typically other diseases with similar symptoms such as malaria, cholera, and other viral hemorrhagic fevers are first excluded. Wow. This is deep shit, man. No special, no specific treatment for the disease. <clears throat> Efforts to help persons who are infected include giving them either oral rehydration therapy slightly sweet and salt, slightly water to uh, slightly salty water to drink or intravenous fluids the disease has a high mortality rate often killing between 50 and 90 percent of those infected whoa whoa it was first identified <clears throat> in sudan <clears throat> and the democratic republic of the congo the disease typically occurs in outbreaks in tropical regions of the sub-saharan africa it's always africa bro yeah <laughs> It's always Africa. That's where whatever gets us is going to get out of Africa. You know, when I uh, I did that sci-fi show, that was the scariest part, was the dealing with the uh, infectious diseases by far. Mm -hmm. I asked people about diseases, like what we really have to worry about. The scariest thing they were saying wasn't terrorism. It was just a disease that morphs, just something that becomes like super potent and kills a ton of people. Something like they had that Spanish f flu where it killed a bunch of people in the early 1900s. Yeah, in the 1920s or whatever, yeah. And apparently it started on a military base. Cue the conspiracy theories. But um, <laughs> the, um, the, the, re the thing that was really deadly about it was that it would go after young, healthy men. That it would, people with strong immune systems, it would mm. shut down their immune system. It would, ta it, like, it would kill them quick, which is like really strange. You know, that it like, was almost designed to take out healthy people. Yeah, because normally a flu is, it's like children and old people. Yeah. Yeah, babies and old people have to worry about it. But most young people survive. But that's, you know, it's a creepy thought that at any time something could happen and some virus could morph and turn it into some new thing that we don't know how to deal with. Yeah, and someone you, sneezing on you at an airport could yeah. wipe out 5% of human civilization. <laughs> yeah, think <laughs> about this Ebola. 90% of the people die. Okay, if that's yeah. the high number. What if everyone got Ebola? Just think of that. If one person can get Ebola, what's to say that everyone can't get Ebola? Well, because there are specific protocols in place to stop that from... Yes. Mm -hmm. Most likely, I'm just being crazy. Most likely, most people are not going to get Ebola. But if they did, what we're saying is at least half would die. Yeah. That's, that's, that's some catastrophic shit. It's like with the way the world's interconnected, it's like that could... Like TSA doesn't check for Ebola. Mm -mm. Like it could get through an airport. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, boom. Well, listen to what that just said, that it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, the symptoms don't show up that quickly. Two days to three weeks. Three weeks is a long time. You contract a virus and then you, you have that virus for three weeks yeah. and you don't know. If you travel a lot. Traveling, licking your hand and touching things everywhere. Yeah. High-fiving people. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. You could, you could spread that shit for sure. Coughing on a subway. Like, there's so many... So the more you think about it, you're spits like... Spits on the hand and gives you a hand job? <laughs> <laughs> right? Imagine right. that's how you got Ebola. You're like, God damn, really? Yeah, I'm at the hottest shit. <laughs> <laughs> Her eyes were really red. She was probably just high. <laughs> but now I feel like I have yeah. a temperature. <laughs> she was so hot, she gave me a temperature. Yeah, I think she gave me something. <laughs> just go to Planned Parenthood. They'll figure it out. <laughs> And parenthood. So what do I have? Check for Ebola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you be getting uh, yeah. hand jobs from African chicks. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> African chicks. It looks like you have, we need you to leave immediately. That's what you have. Yeah, so this, uh, the woman, um, the second patient, uh, you know, there was two patients that, uh, that flew into America, apparently. Weak but improving, the second American Ebola patient to arrive in U.S. soil was wheeled into an Atlanta hospital Tuesday by workers in biohazard suits. You should see the picture, man. It's freaky. Yeah. The it's picture is them wheeling her into... Uh, it's dark, dude. Pull that picture up. Pull this picture up. Yeah. There was somebody that... They, they had a video where they showed this like news guy that was hiding in a bush taking video or photos of this, and he wasn't wearing a suit, though. And it was just like, uh, oh, he's like feet away from this person, not wearing a suit. This is how it happens. This, this dumb... Oh, hair. yeah, that would be like a, yeah. a plot in yeah. like... Like Crazy. that old episode of The Incredible Hulk. <laughs> 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 right? That would be how the guy gets the super disease. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to do my job, man. I'm a reporter. Look at that. It's so weird. Looking at them taking that that gurney and pushing it in those spacesuits. Yeah. That's madness. It's like E.T. Ooh, that's so scary. Ooh. Dude. That's so scary. I wonder if it's like 90% though if it... If it happened in developed nations with, like, hospitals and shit. I don't know, man. Because in tribes, like, in Africa, I'm sure when people get it, they're like, oh, the disease is back. Like, what do we do? Like, we'll just, you know, start a fire and, like, chant to the gods and, like, hope that it goes away. More than 1,400 Ebola cases have been confirmed in the worst known outbreak of the disease, and more than 800 people have died. Most of these cases have been the countries of Guinea, Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. The experimental drug or anything else about the infections ultimately leads to an Ebola cure. That would be incredible, this doctor saying. This is dark shit, dude. I didn't know that this was the worst outbreak of Ebola ever. Did you know that? No. Yeah. Wow. And in, those, and in countries like that, too, they're like, well, what, what next? <laughs> I know, right? Like, what could be worse? Both aid workers received doses of an experimental Ebola drug derived in part from tobacco plants and never before tested on humans before they left Liberia. Brantley got an additional dose at Emory. Wow. Whew. Man, that's scary shit. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You know, whenever there's a movie like that uh, World War Z mm -hmm. or any of those movies... Like, it's always the same beginning, and it's a beginning just like this. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're reading a story, and you're like, do you think, this is really, this sounds really bad. And then one of us would be like, nah, it's nothing. It's nothing to worry about. Yeah. They got it under control. That's what they do. Yeah. These guys are great at it. That's, that's what they why, do. That's why there's a CDC, guys. Yeah. Anyway, I'm headed to the airport to get on a flight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he's the guy who lands, and he's itchy, and his fucking <laughs> eyes are bleeding. What's going on, man? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I'll be fine. I got to go home and hug my wife and children. Hey, totally we really fine. should take a look at you. No, 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 no. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Now I've I'm going to meeting. go to this sporting event. Yeah. <laughs> I've got front row tickets to the Lakers game, and I'm not going to miss it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he goes there, and the Lakers win, and you see him high-fiving everybody. Yeah. Sweating. <laughs> yeah. He's doing blow in the bathroom. I feel like shit. So he yeah. does a couple of bumps, and he's high-fiving everybody. Sharing needles. <laughs> <laughs> Just spreading I've Ebola. never done heroin, but I'll try it today. Fuck it, bro. YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing heroin. YOLO. <laughs> yeah. Man, it could happen. There's a lot of selfish fucking people, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people that, you know, like they get HIV, they don't tell people. That's yeah. a big one, man. That's a big one. John Holmes. Yeah. That guy did it. Yeah, this is, I mean, that's, um, th th that's, it's a weird thing. Like, you think, like, if someone caught the zombie disease and they knew they had the zombie disease, but... They knew that it didn't show up for like a couple of weeks, but they could transmit it to people. Would they still fuck? I say they would. Yeah. They yeah. probably would. Be on know? my side. I want you to be on this. I don't want to be the only one with the zombie disease. Yeah. It'd be, <laughs> if a dude was drinking in a seedy hotel room and he ordered up a stripper and he knew he had the zombie disease, I could totally see this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The zombie disease fucking spread. That's people, all you'd have to do, right? Yeah. They find a way to rationalize. Mm -hmm. Like, well, everyone's going to get it anyway. Exactly. And she asked me if I had chlamydia or gonorrhea. <laughs> I said I didn't lie. I said I didn't have that. 
Everybody's going to get it, bro. The sooner you accept that, the yeah. <laughs> quicker you get some of the sweet, sweet pussy. Yeah, no one ever asks, like, you don't have this zombie disease, do you? <laughs> what are you even talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's crazy. The what disease? Yeah. Are you fucking sick? Fucking me? Yeah, why would Seriously? I have... Seriously? Uh, Come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there could be something dark, man. There could be some really crazy avian swine monkey flu that comes along that they just don't see coming. Especially these these hemorrhagic ones. Ooh, those are terrifying. Yeah. We should take these two people that they flew to Atlanta and just, like, drop them off in North Korea and just Why? let them walk around. And they need to study them and find <laughs> out whether or not the drugs work on them, dummy. You got to, like, like, find out, like, how to fix these people. Like, when they put a lot of money into these things, like these kind of projects, like they have uh, new drugs they're trying to test. If if it works, the amount of money that they can make from it is giant. So they're probably working really hard on developing some sort of a cure. And if they, they, they had enough hope in it they injected people with, that's a good sign. You know, it doesn't mean it's going to be effective, but it means they probably have done a lot of work with it already and they're pretty sure it does something good. Yeah. They're not just taking wild guesses. Let's just inject them with the first thing that comes to mind. Tobacco! Okay, yeah. let's do it. Fuck it, tobacco. You know, there, there, there must be some sort of a reason. Drug maker stock falls after big pop. Hmm. Why, Why is there, there no Ebola vaccine? There is no cure for Ebola. Dude, this is the beginning of a goddamn horror movie. Because the people that have it don't have credit cards. Like, why would you create a vaccine or a, or a drug where people are like, we can pay you in goats. <laughs> <laughs> we can. <laughs> it's true. Here is this an Adobe hut. <laughs> Could you imagine if we found out, and I'm sure someone will suggest, this black helicopters, <laughs> but someone will suggest that the reason why this Ebola outbreak has happened was because someone poisoned a bunch of people with Ebola. It's been shown. Right. They injected Ebola into the drinking water of this tribe <laughs> so that they could spread it. The aid workers would bring it back home with them. And then next thing you know, this pharmaceutical drug company is making trillions of dollars. Yeah. Right? Someone's going to suggest that. But it could just be Ebola, motherfucker, all right? Yeah. <laughs> it could be. It could just be nature. <laughs> people escaped. They weren't supposed to. They quarantined people. People got out. It spread. Lots of people died. They could just be that, too. And it's most likely just that. But it's scary. It's scary as fuck. It just shows you how easy it is for that shit to actually spread. Like, everything doesn't have to be a conspiracy to be totally terrifying. Mm -hmm. Just a disease like this is fucking totally terrifying. It doesn't have to be manufactured by the government. Like, everybody has this idea when one of these things happens. Like, it's one of the first things that you start reading about. It's like these government instituted programs where they designed viruses that could not be yeah. fought off. And they Six did this men in a try. dark, smoky room. Lower Decided. the world population. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they want to lower the world population to 500,000 worldwide. How do you think they're going to do that? Oh, okay. Yeah, you're like, I don't know, but why? To pocket billions of dollars. They will own everything. Yeah. 500,000 hookers and them. <laughs> <laughs> a nation. That's mean 500,000 people is not a lot. That's what the, uh, isn't that what the Georgia Guidestones, doesn't it say something like that? It says like 500 million worldwide. You know the Georgia Guidestones? What is that? The Georgia Guidestones are these really tall pieces of stone that were carved in several different languages with guides for how to run a civilization. Whoa, I've never heard of that. Yeah. Whoa. And this, uh, here, I'll, I'll pull it up because it's pretty interesting. The Georgia Guidestones, like, the guy who made them, I'm not sure who that is, but he, uh, he actually had some good guides as far as like how to uh how to how to manage a civilization not you know they're not perfect but they're kind of interesting um here maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature that's one two guide reproduction wisely improving fitness and diversity guide reproduction meaning that's like some Gattaca shit. Yeah. yeah, engineering reproduction. I mean, like uh, eugenics. Yeah. yeah, I mean, th what they're doing is look. You could say that this is some sort of an evil plot, and it may be, but it also might be that they're just trying to look at it in what you would consider a cold and calculated manner. Mm -hmm. But if you looked at it in a cold and calculating manner, I'm not telling you that anybody should do this. But if you did, 
you would want to take the smartest females and breed them with the smartest males and the ones who had the most good habits, the ones who were the most fit. You would want them to be the ones that would be raising children more often. Mm. You know, it's just like what you would do if you were raising dogs. That's you know? an interesting one. <clears throat> yeah. Obama is a Muslim. <laughs> is that on the Georgia guy's yeah. tones? It is now. Wow, somebody <laughs> spray painted it. That's so rude. What else does it say here? Um, unite humanity with a living new language. Whoa. That's well, interesting. Huh. That's interesting. It doesn't say like what. Well, it's emojis. It's a, new, living, yeah, right? <laughs> a living new language. That's interesting, like a, a language for all of humanity. That would that would really help, <laughs> for sure. Rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Okay. Um, that's uh, just common sense, right? Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. That's kind of duh. Yeah. Right? Let all nations rule internally resolving external disputes in a world court. Okay. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Fuck yes. Balance personal rights with social duties. Absolutely. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. And ten, be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. The only thing that's repeated twice in the entire thing. Huh. It's not a bad idea. I mean, listen, you're going to need a lot more than that if you're going to run a fucking world. Oh, I know. But they're not bad. There's only a couple of them that are kind of goofy. There's nothing in there about how to lay fiber optic cables <laughs> across the fucking ocean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Help us out here, Georgia Stone thing. <laughs> Where's the Georgia Stone thing at? It's, it's Georgia, I would assume. Right? Georgia? Uh, let's find out. Uh, Elbert County, Georgia. A uh, message clearly conveying a set of 10 guidelines as inscribed on the structure in eight modern languages. And a shorter message is inscribed at the top of the structure in four ancient languages, Babylonian, classical Greek, Sanskrit, and Egyptian hieroglyphs. Wow. The structure is sometimes referred to as American Stonehenge. The monument is 19 feet, three inches tall, made from six granite slabs, Weighing 237,746 pounds. Why am I reading this? Jeez. Nobody cares. <laughs> the capstone lies at the top of the five slabs, which are uh, astronomically aligned. An additional stone tablet, which is set on the ground a short distance to the west of the structure, provides some notes on the history and the purpose of the guide stones. In June of 1979, an unknown person or persons under the pseudonym R.C. Christian hired Elberton Granite Finishing Company to build the structure. Wow. In 2008, wow. the stones were defaced with polyurethane paint. Death to the New World Order, like all that shit that we saw. Wired Magazine called the defacement the first serious act of vandalism in the Guidestones history. I wonder if they clean that up. Do they? Can they clean that shit up? Yeah. Spray paint? Yeah. I, think they can take I mean, off. you can still slightly see it, but... Oh, that's so annoying. It man. is annoying. Death to the New World Order. Jesus Christ. Some fucking kids... Kids are crazy people. Death to the new world order. You know, <laughs> can you imagine if they said, okay, listen, man, we're going to give you a button that kills the new world order. Yeah. Okay. But before you hit that button, <laughs> can you at least identify who you're killing? Yeah. I mean, it's death to the new world order. What's the new world order? Is it the banks or is it the politicians? Is it everybody? Yeah, it's really vague. Okay. Right. And if you kill them, what happens to everything? Because if you, you go totally death to the New World Order, what are you going to Are you going to run the banks? Mm -hmm. Who's going to run the banks? Is there a bank now? Like, how do I get credit? Yeah. <laughs> what? Do, how do I use my credit card? Yeah, you can't just, like, hit the button and then be like, I'm going to go get something to eat now. Because, like, yeah. your credit card won't work. Yeah. Like, it's over. It's over, dude. Got to be careful. You can't death to the New World Order. <laughs> Maybe enslave them and force them to work yeah. for us. Enslave the New World Order and force them to work for us and fix this problem that they created. Okay, I'll be with you. <laughs> okay, I'm down yeah. with you on that. Yeah. Well, you can't get to the new world order. At least can they just like tell us how this thing is running, you know, right. before you kill them? I'd start with like <laughs> accountability for the new world order. <laughs> <laughs> like explain yourselves. Death. Yeah. What do you mean? Why would you write that on the Georgia Guidestones, you silly fuck? The Georgia Guidestones are fascinating. I think it's interesting that they don't know who the dude is or unknown dudes or dudettes. Yeah, especially since they commissioned, like, a place to do it. Yeah. They're like, dude, don't tell anyone we were here. Well, you could rock it that way in 1979, though. You know? 1979, yeah. like, 
There's right. no DNA. There was no credit cards. There was no nothing. Like a paper receipt with a carbon coffee that yeah. they gave you. That was it. That was the only record. Yeah. People used to buy groceries with checks Yeah, all the time. You would like see women at the cash register and you know they would be reading, okay, was that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And they'd pay with a check. Like, that was super common. Now it's rare. When I see someone paying with a check, I get kind of excited. Really? Yeah, like it's like a legacy thing. Like, whoa, you're not going to see that much longer. Yeah. It's kind of cool. It's yeah, like it's, a, it's always old people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, there's some housewives, you know, sometimes people, they like to balance their, their checkbook like that. That's right. how they, they make sure that they keep a, an accurate assessment of what's in there. But now you can balance your checkbook like looking. You can look it up online. Not balance it, but at least be aware. You can do it pretty easily. Find out what your balance is. The craziest thing is you can send a check. On, you can take a picture of a check mm-hmm. and send it over the internet. Yeah, deposit it using yeah. your phone. Well, how about all these businesses now that have these phone apps that you, you put a thing on your phone, you sl- swipe a credit card, and oh, you yeah. can pay for a credit card with your phone. Yeah. They, a lot of businesses have those things now. Uh, Square is like the big one, right? Yeah. Like that changes like merch. Yeah. If you're on the you you can go. Oh, I now accept credit cards on my iPhone. Do you have one of those? Because mm-hmm. you have an LLC, right, for yeah. Death Squad. So yeah. you have one of those you put on your phone. You, anyone can get one. You, they but sell, do you have one? Yeah, yeah. So I you have. have one for like shows and shit when you sell T-shirts. Yeah, I've never really done that, dude. Why are you not doing that? That sounds perfect. Yeah, that sounds cool as fuck. You yeah. feel so independent. I can't. I'm, I'm my own business. Yeah, this uh, right. I, I would wait. Are you saying there's a problem? Do you not do it because there's like some issue? No, I just yeah. it, it's just uh, you know if if you're selling a ten dollar poster, usually people have ten dollars, you know. So it's right. it's it's not necessary. But I, if somebody I somebody sold... likes cash, <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, no, <laughs> how about we fucking next subject, you <laughs> next subject. <laughs> But no, it works good. I mean, my weed dealer sells it. Hey, easy, it. bro. Yeah. You're LA fucking throwing weed. him under the bus, too. <laughs> LA speed weed. How dare you throw him <laughs> under the bus? No, it's cool. Like, every, you know, like, a lot of small businesses, like, small, like, mom and pop stores use that now. Instead mm-hmm. of having the big credit card machine, they just have, like, an iPad sitting there that you just sign. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I, I went to a coffee place recently that uh, you swipe your credit card, and then you write on the screen. Right. You know, you write your thing on the screen. What's really crazy is that, like, there's, like, these little tablets, and it's all this really complicated screen, high-definition, touchscreen, super Mm -hmm. accurate, but you're still, like, doing this thing with your fucking, you're putting your mark. That's how you prove it's you. That's so goofy. It is goofy. It's It's real weird that that's still the way we do it. And it doesn't even matter anymore. Like, you don't, there's no need to go through that. On I did once... I was because I, I was looking at one of these signing things. I'm like, there's no way it matters. And I wrote in the signature box, <laughs> no way it matters. "Stolen card," <laughs> and I hit submit, and it totally worked. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's just they want to get a record of you making a mark on that paper, you yeah. making a mark on that screen. What do you think will happen? Because they're they're going to stop teaching cursive in school. Yeah, and they're already starting to. Thank God. What's going to happen with signatures? That's a good question. That's a very good question. Like what are we gonna? How are we gonna sign things? Mm. Like, if you never learn cursive, what is, are we gonna all have like codes? Do you think that the individual? idea of signing things is ridiculous? And isn't it kind of ridiculous the idea of signing things? Like you said, you wrote it down. <laughs> we got it right here. He said it. Like yeah. the idea that you're bound yeah. to an agreement. You These can never... wavy lines, yeah. that you put on paper. There's certain things that I think. Like business dealings, like say if you and I decided to build a house together, mm-hmm. like Nick and Joe go into construction business and we decided to build, right. and we have a business and the business is 50 50, and you know, we pay for the same amount for this and that, and we get the same amount of profit, and you got that all worked out. That kind of makes sense yeah. to do that. But there's a lot of things that you sign for, like cable agreements. You know, or cell phone contracts, or there's these like, entanglements, business entanglements. Wait, there's a contract to get a cell phone. Yeah, I have, a, I have to have a contract. Like, what is this? What am, what am I agreeing to? I'm agreeing to what is this? Is ridiculous. There's a whole documentary I watched on Netflix about terms and conditions Ugh. and all the things that you sign away the yeah, second you, look you at them. yeah. Who fucking reads that shit? Nobody, and that's why they get away with putting all kinds of insane 
shit in What's there. What's the documentary called? It's called like We're Fucked or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's like something really terrible. <laughs> I think it's called like Terms and Conditions, Terms and Something. It's on it's on Netflix. Oh, and it's it's pretty that. interesting that they go through all the different companies and like uh which ones like will will sell your personal information because you've agreed the second you hit click yes on iTunes or like you agree to Apple's the second you turn on your iPhone or something right. like that they can store your information they can sell it if the government needs it they they used to be like we we will not give out your information and then they've changed the clause to like you know unless like it'll be words like unless certain things come up like, well, <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? It just be anything. <laughs> unless certain things it's, come up, they're so vague about it. Uh, like you know, that. unless like shit goes down, you're like you can't say that. Yeah, it's just what is that? That South Park episode, Human Cinepad, where it's all about Apple's terms and conditions, and it ends up like having like you sign, you have to eat this guy's ass. <laughs> 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 oh, South Park's the best. Yeah. That's so great. Uh, yeah, nobody reads it. I would, I would like, I would love to know what the actual numbers of people who read the terms and conditions before they click on it. Before oh, they click be accept. Like half a percent, if that, right? That it's means so much. That means a half a percent is one person out of two hundred, mm-hmm. right? Isn't that what it means? I think. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One percent would be one out of a hundred. So half a percent is one person out of two hundred. Yeah, right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah, yeah, it does. I don't I don't believe that. Do so you think it's even less? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's probably not even not one percent, but like one tenth of one percent. I bet it's one out of a thousand. That's what I bet. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. One out of a thousand actually reads the whole thing and Is goes, hmm, do I want to click on this? Let me see. <clears throat> yeah. Gets out his reading glasses. This fucking goddamn liberal president we have here trying to communize my country. Yeah. Yeah, that guy will read it. And it, they Black tell you. They tell you in the documentary, if you spent all the time reading every time, like, a new terms and conditions comes up for all the different things that make you sign one, it, it, you, it would take, like, years of your life. You have to take, like, days off of work to be like, dude, I just signed up for Netflix, Spotify, and I got a new iPhone, so, like, I can't come into work today because I have to read, like, 860 pages of legal jargon. Yeah, it should be, at a certain point in time, it should be that your method of delivery is so woefully ineffective that it's illegal. Like, a terms yeah. and conditions on that scale, if I could prove that my theory was correct and that it's, like, one-half of one percent or one-tenth of one percent, rather, that, that actually read that thing, those should be illegal. Because yeah. you're making people sign things that they're just not reading. You know they're not reading it. Yeah, You're, like, misleading. You're intentionally making it more difficult. They make everything so rock-solid in their favor, and even things that, like, just shouldn't be that way. There's certain agreements. Like, when you find out that anytime you cancel, anytime you, you know, you want to change this, you're subject to fees, you're subject to that, and you'll, mm. you find out things like about your information, your history, they're selling your phone number or your email, and there's so many things that happen to people when you sign those little things away. But we do it recklessly. Yeah. I don't ever think about it. Have you ever had a, an app that you clicked uh, yes on and then it started making tweets for you? Yeah, there's, there's especially a lot on Android. There's a lot of sketchy things that like uh, you're mm-hmm. installing, so, so they can also track you. Like any, whoever made this app can track you. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I had a guy. Um, he made some app uh, that t- tweeted for me <laughs> something about like uh, how to a prize for an iPad. You know, and uh, and someone said, "Dude, do you hawk an iPads?" And I was like, "What are you talking about?" And then I went to my thing. I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck is this?" And then I found out where it was from. This guy, I, I guess, I had like retweeted something from a website. Like sometimes when you retweet something, like if you go to a website and you click on a, a story or something that you think is interesting, and you there's like a tweet button. Mm-hmm. But if you tweet it, like sometimes you're agreeing to allow them to have access to your Twitter account, or at least used to be that way. Well, a lot of those websites, that's how you they steal your credit or your uh, password also because you go in there and it could be like, tweet this story, and mm-hmm. this is like you need to log in. Right. And what it's doing, it's actually stealing your password and logging you in at the same time. So it mm-hmm. looks like everything's going right, and then they, that's how a lot of people get fished for their, their yeah, passwords. Yeah, I could only imagine. But uh, this dude somehow or another had like an app installed on my Twitter. 
It was like, you know, those those things that are attached to your Twitter? You know, there's like Evernote, and you can tweet with Evernote, and there's a bunch of different ones. Yeah. This guy had like this installed on my computer. I was like, what wow. the fuck? So I go to his website. His website is like, a, you know, his, his Twitter page got like 100,000 fucking uh, friends mm-hmm. or whatever it is, followers. Like, like, how's he doing that? Like, how, how like, it's just scams all around. Yeah, you, know? add, you automatically add them, probably. Yeah, I do. I do a search to find out what, like, what kind of traffic his website's getting. Ridiculous traffic because there's all this weasel work going on. Yeah, you know, sneaky people that force you into clicking on things or trick you into clicking on things. Next thing you know, they're tweeting about iPad giveaways from your account. You're like, what? And then you find out that that's legal. Yeah, like, you, you 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 actually clicked on a thing. That said, yeah. you're allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's bizarre. Like if, after watching that documentary, it made me want to like just not sign up uh, for a lot of websites where I'm like, do I really want that? Do I need that? Because I'm not going to read the terms and conditions. Yeah. Whoa, Brian Dunning sentenced to 15 months in prison. Who is that? Ooh. Remember Brian? Yeah. Yeah, Brian Dunning was the guy. I had him on uh, my podcast and. We had a very uh, contentious discussion. Uh, that's sad to hear. And he um, he had a um, an issue with, I believe it was Amazon, right? eBay. 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 Yeah, and he had created some sort of an app. And if you use the app, it uh, it puts a cookie on your uh, on, on on your computer. Like if you use it, mm-hmm. it puts a cookie on your computer, and then anytime you go to eBay and make a purchase or do business, he would get like a kickback. And the way uh, he <coughs> described it and the way they described it is very different. So I don't know who's right or who's wrong, but what they're accusing him of is you pl- it plants something on your like it plants a cookie, and then even if you don't go to eBay through his website, it appears that you did. So they have Whoa. like these eBay affiliates where say like if NickYusuf.com, if I went through that and then went to eBay and purchased something, you would get like a little tiny piece of the action. And over yeah. time that count that counts for a lot. And because these apps were popular, they counted for a lot and he made a lot of money. Five million. Whoa. Yeah, he made five million dollars off this app and then they uh they shut it down <laughs> and arrested sure. him. And when we had him on the podcast, um I do not think he's a bad guy, but there's something wrong with the way he thinks. Um, and what, what I say that I say that with all, all respect and dignity, um, communicating about a, a fellow human being. Like I don't hate that guy. He's silly, and he said a bunch of crazy shit about me. Um, but I think he's, he, I think there's something wrong with the way he thinks. I think, that, and I even communicated with him about that in private. We had like a little email conversation. And he actually asked me about psychedelic drugs. And he's curious about the mind expanding aspects, and we had a we we had a pretty intense conversation about it, um, because I think and I, and I told him that I said with all due respect I think there's something wrong with the way you think like I don't know what it is but I think it's like a mental illness. <laughs> his his versions of reality and reality itself are so twisted. Like there was a video that we watched of Tower Seven from September 11th falling. Yeah, and he was trying to convince us that it doesn't collapse into its base. He was trying to convince us that only three quarters of the tower, the three quarters of the tower, is still standing. It was only the top quarter or whatever it was. He had some weird numbers in his head. I'm like, what are you talking about? That that thing gives out and falls into a pile. Yeah, like the reason why it's so high is because that's how much shit there is. The whole thing's gone. Like the building yeah. disintegrated. It's not a cartoon yeah. where it all just vanishes. Yeah, it's all on top. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's on, a for rent it's, sign. It's a like stack of <laughs> shit. The reason why the stack is so high is because there was a lot of shit above it. It fell. Like this yeah. is retarded. Like this is. But he wouldn't let it go. And when I was looking at him, when he wouldn't let it go, I was like, Oh, there's something wrong in there. Like there's a there's a missing thing. And then when he started talking about his life, it made way more sense because he was raised a very very conservative Mormon. Like right. his whole life, he was very religious, and he's he's developed his mind developed under this fundamentalist thinking that is super damaging to people. And that sounds like a, a, an ignorant bigot and an anti-religious thing for me to say, mm-hmm. but just listen to this for a second. I I have friends that grew up Mormon, and they to this day tell me that they're really gullible and they worry about it. <clears throat> they don't they don't know 
whether or not someone is trying to pull a fast one on them. They don't know whether or not like a, a yoga guru <laughs> or a, a cult member could rope them in and suck them into things by yeah. telling them that they found the secret. Like they have this weird need to believe irrational things. And this is from this woman who tells me herself. It disturbs her. She's like, I don't know what it is, but I have this weird, like I'm, I'm susceptible to trickery. And I was like, whoa, like that is a weird admission. Yeah. And she was just talking, she's like, as I've gotten older, and she's not dumb. She's like, as I've gotten older and I've talked to my other friends, I'm like, well, what is it about me? And she's like, because all my life I thought that God had my back. All my life I thought that God has everything covered and everything's going to be fine until over and over again fucked up things would happen to her. And she was forced to go, wait, what's going on here? What? And then she would see the ridiculous hypocrisy of the church. She looked into the religion deeper and then got to be like your forties and is looking at her life going, fuck. Yeah. Like, what is this? And why am I, why am I, vo that guy is like that. He grew up super religious. When you grew up super religious like that, especially if you don't have open-minded parents, like there's a way I think that you could grow up with a sense of spirituality and still be very open-minded and, maybe scientifically inclined, but the reason why this guy is like su such a skeptic, he's like going after things, like debunking things, showing, huh, this is all nonsense, ladies and gentlemen. Like, have you ever seen his video on fracking? Yeah, yeah. That's the perfect example of, there's like a no-nonsense voice that people use. And it's like there's a tone, there's like a very condescending way of communicating <laughs> yeah. their ideas. It's the no-nonsense guy. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that are misunderstood about hydraulic fracturing, otherwise known as fracking. Have you ever seen it? Pull that video up. Cause yeah. let's, let's just listen. I believed it back in the day when I first saw it. What would you believe? That fracking was real. What do you mean? Or I mean, not fracking. I'm sorry. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I believed it when I thought. Fracking is totally real. They make a lot of money off of fracking, son. What, did you, uh, what were you talking about? <sighs> this little things in the cameras. I was thinking of that. Things in the camera. Remember, like, the lines? Uh, oh, uh, you're uh, talking yeah. about, like, the, the rods? Rods. That's what I'm oh, talking. yeah, yeah. No, that's totally different. That guy's <laughs> mad at me. That rod guy. The rod guy. <laughs> they, they've clowned him on that uh, Monster Quest show. Mm -hmm. Do you know uh, what the rods are? No, no. <laughs> There's a visual artifact that comes when bugs fly across the screen. Bu uh -huh. Bugs move really fast. And if you don't have a super high-speed camera, it can't capture the bug. So it el elongates the shape of the bug because it's uh -huh. this little tiny thing moving quickly. And it looks like a, a translucent tube that's moving through the air. Yeah. And it's just a video artifact of video cameras trying to capture high-speed bugs. Yeah. And this guy made all these documentaries about this, these things flying in the air, man. And you can only see them on camera. They move too fast for the human eye, which doesn't make any sense because if I can see them on the camera, like the video, that's not too fast for the human eye. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing the video of it. It's just, <laughs> like right. this is actually slower than the human eye can perceive. Yeah. You know, you the human eye sees shit. You know, like hey, what is that? Fucking there's some shit flying by. You, you would see it. This is so stupid. Like if you could see it in the video, you would see it in real life. It's so dumb. So and he tried to run with a conspiracy. Oh, that he made documentaries. Like, oh, yeah. Dude, me and Eddie Bravo got stoned as fuck and watched it. And we're like, dude, there's. What do you think these rods are? <laughs> we're, so, <laughs> we're so high. We're so high. We're so ridiculous. We we're going. What do you think they are, man? It's crazy that you can't see them. I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense, man. It doesn't even make any sense. So you think they're everywhere? Yeah, they're everywhere. They're just moving so fast we can't see them. We're like, <laughs> we're like that's so crazy. They Maybe we should put up a net. Us. We should put up a net and try to catch them. Yo, they're so fast. They see the net. They're gone. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Like Hilarious. Otherwise, like they would slam into planes and shit. They'd oh, be yeah. peeling them off of planes. Here it is. Listen to Brian talk about hydraulic fracturing. Then sand is mixed with the water and gets distributed throughout the cracks to prop them open. The water is then pumped back out, and now the gas can freely flow to the borehole. The controversy comes mainly from the fact that about one half of one percent of the fluid consists of lubricants and surfactants okay. needed to get the sand <laughs> system in it. Controversy comes from the fact that people can't drink their water anymore, man. <laughs> this hydraulic fracturing, like this, that's one of those things you bring up in a conversation on podcasts and people go fucking bananas. It's a global warming type issue. Really? Yeah, you know how you, global warming, if you believe in global warming or if you don't believe in global warming, you're going to yeah. piss somebody off and oh, yeah. you're going to get heated tweets about it. People yeah. get fucking furious because it's an, it's an ideology argument. Mm -hmm. And people that abortion. support, yes, people that support hydraulic fracturing support business. 
you know, you don't understand, Nick Yusuf, you fucking hippie. You don't understand business, okay? The way business gets done is th it's, it's cheaper to get that oil out than it is to rely on foreign oil and endanger Americans. Like, it's that sort of attitude. Yeah. It's like, and then there's the people that are, like, environmentally conscious go, whoa, 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 what's happening? Like, how much water's getting polluted? Like, how many wells are there? There's millions? Mm -hmm. Hold on, wait a minute. You guys have a million fracking wells. There's a million. And it's causing earthquakes, too? Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't... Well, what we need right now is not hippies. What we need yeah. now is oil. It's patriotism. <laughs> patriotism <laughs> and oil. <laughs> I'm not pro or con fracking, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not opposed to putting a fence around a certain area of, like, South Dakota where nobody goes mm -hmm. and fracking the shit out of that bitch and not having yeah. to go to war for foreign oil. I'm, I'm not totally opposed to that. My problem is I don't think it's controlled. I don't. When you talk about like, all right, let's guess how many fracking wells are there. Let's take a, take a wild guess. They've been fracking like in Ohio lately, and now we have all these earthquakes over there. Mm -hmm. Oh no yeah, way. proven. Yeah, yeah, proven. proven. That's yeah. so scary. But, um, okay, how many fracking I'd wells a in the U.S.? A thousand. Yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> that's a really low number. Oh, that's so. That's or do so I just low. look cute right now? <laughs> no, you, look, you do look. You're a handsome bastard. But that no, I'm saying it's so low. It's ridiculous. I bet it's more wow. than a million. Oh, I would say. A million? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I'd say, yeah, 5,000 to 10,000. That's it. Okay, you guys say in the thousands, would you say? I said I said around 1,000. You said 5,000 to yeah. 10,000. I said a million. Okay. <sighs> I bet you guys are right. Okay, 2013. Doo, 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 doo. What's the numbers? What's the numbers? Over 1.1 million active oil and gas wells in the U.S. Whoa. Wow. All right, how many of them are fractured? Many people ask us how many wells have been hydraulically fractured in the United States. It's an excellent question, but not one that's easily answered. Most states don't release the data on well uh, stimulation activities. Also, since the data are released by state regulatory agencies, it is necessary to obtain data from each state that has oil and gas data to even begin the conversation. We finally had a chance to complete the task and have able to be uh, able to aggregate the following totals. Wow, this is pretty nuts, man. There's a lot of fucking wells, bro. There's over a million. Woo! That's crazy. Dude, that's scary. Man. How is that a better idea than investing in, like, solar paneling and, like, alternate sources? I don't know. There's a bunch of different kinds of wells, though, so let me just clarify that. There's um, directional, there's a bunch of different types, directional, <laughs> horizontal, either direction or horizontal, vertical, hydraulically fractured, not fractured, unknown, or shale formation. So out of all of these, all of these, it's a million. But it says hydraulically fractured, it says 130. But does that mean there's only 130 fracking wells? As each state releases data differently, it wasn't always possible to get consistent data on fracking wells. These wells are known to be hydraulically fra fractured, but the slant of the well is unknown. Oh, I see. Okay. They have a bunch of different ways that they get the, wa the water out or get the, um, the oil out. This is fascinating shit, man. They go down and they take turns. They're like they'll go down and then take left turns, or they'll go like horizontally, or they go at an angle into the earth, depending on where the where the rock is and where the oil is. They're trying to suck out. Wow, that's a crazy fucking thing, man. Hydraulically fractured. Okay, here it is. <clears throat> Wells that have been hydraulically fractured might appear in any of the eight categories, with the obvious exception of not fractured. So that's the <laughs> only one that doesn't have uh, hydraulically fractured wells included in it. So uh, categories that are very likely to be fractured include horizontal, hydraulically fractured, and unknown shale formation, the total of which is 32,000 wells. That's most likely to be fractured. So they don't know, but at least 32,000. However, the number doesn't include any wells from Texas or Colorado, where we know thousands of wells have been drilled into major shale formations, shale formations, but the data for which had to be placed into categories that were more vague. So there's different states have different like regulatory bodies, I guess. The states that are better to sh to fucking rape the earth in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
they probably are better off hiding the information too. So I, it seems like um, what they're saying is like thirty-two thousand plus hydraulically fractured ones that they could locate that they know are most likely hydraulically fractured. But then there's a bunch of the other ones that possibly could. And the ones that aren't fractured, there's only 7,477 of them out of the 1,136,000. What's crazy is that they create earthquakes. <laughs> yeah. It's fucked. And then it's still like, nah, it's worth it. It's worth totally it. Totally worth bro, it. Bro, it's worth it if you keep your family warm. Yeah. It's for America. Keep America safe, <laughs> bro. America's safe. America's going to be a puddle of goo. Yeah. A stinky puddle of goo and dead elk. <laughs> 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 choking bison with their fucking legs <laughs> on the air, <clears throat> gagging blood out. They have a new yeah. Ebola that comes only from oil. Right. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I Dude. don't know, man. I just wish there was a better way to power shit. I wonder if there would, like, if there was no oil, let's say that oil didn't exist, how far do you think civilization would have gone? Because there's no doubt that the combustion engine and, and making machines and oh, trucks yeah. and engines and... That's the reason why we became what we are today. They're mm-hmm. this fucking chaotic mass super organism that All we right. are, right? So if there was no oil, if there wasn't an, an element on Earth, and the only could have like plant-based oils, like uh, you know, s- sunflower oil or some shit, yeah. hemp oil, you know, which they used for lamps and stuff. They use like different kinds of oils for lamps, but no oil in the ground. How far would things have gotten? I don't know. Because how long would it have taken? This is a part of the conversation where Brian <laughs> checks out. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, who knows? Like, because how long would it have been before you'd found an alternate way, like the electric car? Like, how long did that take? Forever. But you need a, you need combustion engines to make all those things. See, what, to make an electric car? Yeah, there's. You need an engine to take the parts to get the parts to the car manufacturer to deliver the stuff. Like, those are all yeah. being delivered with trucks. Right, like this idea that like you get an electric car and you're karma free. This is nonsense. Well, no, that that technology would have had to been created yes. for the manufacturing. Everything would have had to have been run electrically. Exactly. But how long would it have taken forever to discover? Yeah, forever without the the motor to take the parts uh-huh. to put it together. Like you got to pick up the tire somewhere and drive it in a truck. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Those aren't electric trucks. You know. Yeah, it would have been like wagons. How for would they have so done? many years. Pulled with oxen. Would have had oxen pulling your fucking tires. Yeah. And, t- and then how are they going to figure out a way to power up these machines? What's going to fire up the electricity? They're going to use a dam, and the dam fires up the electricity for these machines, and these machines build this engine. And, and is there enough electricity to charge batteries? And where are you guys getting the batteries? Where are you yeah, getting the yeah. minerals that go in the batteries? You got to go to Afghanistan, man. Yeah, you got to <laughs> drill for them. How are you going to get to Afghanistan? The oxen yeah. can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take a, a fucking raft and <laughs> fill it up with minerals from Afghanistan and floaty back to America yeah. and build your stupid electric car. <laughs> you know? The battery would have been invented in like 1973. It would have taken that long. <laughs> this is what Obama meant when he was like, when you started a smart bu- small business, you didn't build that. That's what he meant. Like yeah. the, the infrastructure. You cannot have an electric car without the infrastructure. Right. They created batteries back in the Egyptian u- days, though. Yeah. So they might might have been. A little, I think they could have probably done something. It would have been. Well, those batteries were dog shit. Yeah. By the way, yeah. <laughs> you know, let's be honest. Everybody's like, like the batteries are amazing. They weren't even iPhone one. They weren't even close. <laughs> yeah. They were stupid. They, they weren't even Duracell. <laughs> yeah. Those bitches couldn't even power a light. Like you, you couldn't like have like the the light that powers your cell phone. Like, I went out to ch- close my chicken coop last night, and uh, when I, I used my phone as a flashlight. The new iPhone has a, an, uh, like, built-in flashlight thing. Yeah. You, yeah. S- you slide this thing up, and you hit that, and boom, you got a flashlight. It takes two seconds, and it's built in. And it's such a slick thing, you know? Go outside. That wouldn't work. That stupid Egyptian battery, big, goofy-ass right. thing. you got to carry around this pot <laughs> with a <laughs> copper core. <laughs> yeah. Unless you made a big one, like the size of a... Uh you know, like a pyramid. Use the pyramid was all battery the whole time. Can you imagine if that's what it was? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Soon our battery will be operable. <laughs> Pyramids. Are, that was like one of the crazy conspiracy theory hypotheses. Mm-hmm. That p- the pyramid was a giant, some sort of a power plant. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Of course. I believe it. If you can think it up, somebody has like probably written blog entries about it. Yeah, like, that's true. It doesn't matter how kooky the idea is. If you could think up a kooky idea. 
Somebody's written some shit about it. I was thinking of bugs the other day because there was a uh, praying mantis that was on my porch that just hung out the whole whole day. Mm-hmm. And he has like, these huge antennas. And I was like, isn't it weird that we don't really focus, like, these bugs have, like, antennas on them. <laughs> like, in the future, like, we're going to find out that these are, like, aliens that are communicating with each other through some Well, they Wi-Fi. might as well be aliens. Yeah. <laughs> we just don't get, give a shit about them because right. they're little. Yeah. yeah. We can just kick them out of the way. They're little drones, yeah. you know? They're drones for aliens. There's, like, these little... Well, what they are is a weird little life form yeah. that shares the world with us that has no morals, no ethics. Yeah. They're ruthless, cold-hearted, emotionless killers. And they have a hard skeleton. They don't need each other's touch. Yeah. You know, they have this very bizarre military organization as far as they have a queen. You know, they have they have uh, the worker bees, and they're they're building shelter and protecting the hive, and... They're weird, man. We oh, just yeah. don't think of them as being so weird because they're little and we could fucking smoosh them like that. But if a bee yeah, was big... <clears throat> oh, I know. Yeah. But a lot of them, it's like, whole, like if they all of a sudden became big, we're like, fuck! And then we're like, oh, cool, they only live for four days. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> like that threat's neutralized soon. Yeah, but there's so many of them. Yeah. Before we start killing them off with cell phones... Cell phones and pesticides, apparently. The right. big one that's whacked them out. Remember when you were a kid? Bees were everywhere. How often are you see bees? Are we seeing bees every day at my house? Do you, but do you see bees like you saw bees when you were a kid? Well, I haven't tons of, like bees nests everywhere. Yeah, in my house. you do. Yeah, really? oh wow, yeah, maybe it sucks. You, maybe you got a sweet spot for bees <laughs> and wasps. I bee populations wasps. are pretty down though, aren't they? Wasn't that like a? It's a major concern. Let's see, dropping bee populations. And Let's play another game. I say bee populations <laughs> are down by forty percent. Forty. Wow. I would say. 25 20 percent 25 percent what do you yeah. say brian uh i say it's up i say i think Whoa, it's a big conspiracy crazy. i think bees are more bees than ever more bees than all ever. around brian's house <laughs> in <laughs> fact we have a bee problem <laughs> we need to stop these bees okay 30 percent um it's even crazier um 30 percent in the u.s beekeepers experience losses of 40 or 50 percent or more wow Whoa. yeah just as commercial bee operations prepared to transport their hives to the country's largest pollinator event, the fertilizi- fertilizing of California's almond trees. Oh, that's interesting. So they, um, I guess they hire people to go do that. They bring bees, and the bees uh, populate, or uh, bees pollinate these plants. That's pretty cool. Wow. Spread out across 800,000 acres, California's almond orchards typically require 1.6 million domesticated bee colonies to pollinate the flowering trees and produce what has become the state's largest overseas agricultural export. I did not know that. Almonds are our largest overseas export. And why is that? Because weed's illegal, bitch. (laughs) If weed was legal, you don't think that people in like Portugal would be dying to get a hold of some goddamn California weed? Um, but given widespread bee losses to so-called colony collapse disorder this winter, California's almond growers were able to pollinate their crop only through an intense nationwide push to cobble together the necessary number of healthy bee colonies. Wow. Nationwide push. That's crazy. That's how they grow almonds? That's insane. It's amazing. So cool. I love when I find out something like this where I had no idea. Yeah. That they, I didn't know that. I thought bees they made, they just made honey and you know they pollinated shit. But I didn't know that they needed them to grow almonds. Yeah, like they're domesticated. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I thought they only did one thing. They make two delicious items. <laughs> <laughs> they make almonds. Yeah, if it wasn't wow. for them, that's amazing. But that these p- colonies were down, and that in order to pollinate all of their plants, they need to they needed to bring in other bees. There's not like another possibility. They're like, no, 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 no. We need bees. But yeah. what, isn't there another method? Let's let's put our heads together and no, 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 no. It's They're not going to grow. <laughs> you need bees or it's not going to grow. That really puts into light how important bees are, something like that. That really makes you realize like, oh, like if it's not for bees, there's there's not a lot of shit. Like you need those little cunty bugs. Yeah, yeah. That's bizarre, man. And there's this uh, image on... Um, the uh, this uh, Yale site where I'm reading a story and there's this dude who's dressed up in this beekeeper's outfit and he's like handling these bees and moving them around in these uh, in these uh, California farms these uh, onion crops and you're looking at him you're like how is that m- much different than the Ebola guy? What do you mean? 
I mean, he's he's got a fucking crazy suit to protect oh, oh, him yeah, yeah. as well. I mean, that dude's fully suited up for an invasion of attacking monsters. Right. You know? What is that, Brian? It's Tony Hinchcliffe dressed up as a bee. He is a bee. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest bee of all time. <laughs> <laughs> What's what do wasps do anything positive? They or fuck up bees. Just, oh, is that it? Yeah, yeah. Just wasps. Dicks. Aren't they the ones that can keep stinging you? As yeah. where a bee, like it's like one, it's like a kamikaze mission. It's like one right. and done. Wasps. Yeah. Have you ever seen that video? The Japanese hornets killing the beehive. No. Ooh, it's the weirdest video ever, man. Because wow. it's this. If we put it on, it'll probably yeah, get us kicked right. off of YouTube, right? Yeah. Is that how it works? Yeah. It's Wait, one of really? Those, it's one of those ones. Well, there's nature documentaries, man. They go uh, after you and have you pulled from YouTube. What? Yeah, nature documentaries. People own them, you know. They, it probably cost a grip of money to film high-speed video footage of some Japanese hornets fucking up some honeybees. <laughs> right. But just do me a favor. Go, just Google Japanese hornets fuck up honeybees and check okay. it out because it's amazing. They're monsters. They're, they That's cut their crazy. heads off. <laughs> They just cut the honeybees' heads off. And, like, I think it was, like, 30 bees killed 30,000 bees, or 30 hornets killed 30,000 bees, something nutty like that. That's like it's a like serious war. Yeah, that's um, but it's not a war. It's like you with a hatchet in a room full of babies. <laughs> that's what it's like. It's, there's no, no one's fighting back. I mean, they can't do anything. Yeah. They just chop their heads off. So it's like the Iraq war. Something along those lines. Right. Like they, the only way they can kill them is they have to overheat them. So what they do is they all swarm on top of them. They hold the the hornet down and they they keep buzzing. They buzz on him and raise his internal temperature until he dies. Holy shit! Yeah, that's the only way they can kill him. They can't kill him by stinging him. It doesn't work. They can't get through their fucking armor. So they just turn the heat up until they die. Yep, they smother them. They fucking torture them. Mm-hmm. It's the only way to do it. What else would you do? Just trying to eat your babies. Chop their heads off. What the fuck? It's crazy that these like invasions are happening with like mm -hmm. on s such a small level. You think bees are like dumb bee just flying around making honey, and meanwhile they're like, "Here's the plan. All yeah. right, we're going in and we're gonna heat the fucking place up until everyone dies." Well, the, the, no, the the bees do that to the hornets, but right. the, what they do what they do is say one hornet will be a scout hornet, and the oh. scout hornet will show up. And when the scout hornet shows up, that's when the bees swarm it. The bees swarm it and hold it down and try to kill it. Because if they don't kill it, if it gets back to the hornet's nest and goes, yo, I found some bees, uh, yeah. that's when shit gets crazy. That's when they, they fly back and fuck everybody up. That's insane. Yeah, that world, the hornet bee, you know, I think of them as sort of the same sort of category, these flying bugs that sting. Like, that world is unbelievably ruthless. Yeah. The fact that, first of all, the fact that their, their stingers kill them too. Right. Like when they exting a person or something, it pulls out of their body. Like it's this giant sword that pulls out of their body and they die. That happens when they have sex. That happens when they sting. Yeah. They only live to be like a week old, like if they're lucky. And if Whoa. they sting you, they die. And then on top of that, like the female can sting all the time. Like the queen, she doesn't have to worry about her barb coming out. She can just sting all day long. But all she does is seek out other females. So she walks around the hive and smells each individual little honeycomb uh -huh. and those little combs where the bees grow up in. Whatever, that's not a honeycomb. What is it? A, what are those things? A bit of honey. It's not a comb. Whatever it is. Whatever those little pods An where apartment. the larvae are growing. <laughs> if she finds that it's a female, she uses her, her fucking stinger and stabs the baby. What? Yep, that's what it's for. Like no other women. No other like women. That. No wow. other women. There could be only one. She's Highlander. Damn. Yeah. She walks around and stabs all the females. And then fucks all the dudes to death. Yep, fucks them to death. Oh, Jesus That bitch Christ. is gangster as fuck. That's a gangster bitch. Wow. See, that might be the most gangster bitch of the animal kingdom. Right? I mean, probably. She's got a sword on her pussy. Because how many other, like... Praying mantis... Or black widows, I guess, right? Okay, here's females. a good question. Who would win in a fight, a praying mantis or a wasp? Praying mantis. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with the wasp. Wasp versus praying mantis. I'd I mean, say praying mantis. Female praying mantis decapitates her, like fucks the dude, and then Yeah, but those guys him. are bitches. I don't know. I'd praying mantis the, versus wasp. Okay, there's a video. It wouldn't be able to probably reach around. Like if the wasp was like, I'm going to stab you in the back, the praying mantis probably couldn't get it. Yeah. But maybe they they have like hard... Uh, skeletons that they can't be pierced mm. by bees. Mm. I'm gonna go praying mantis. 
Interesting. Is that, is that your bird? Yeah, I'm watching this pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the amazing thing is if only the wasp knew how vulnerable the praying, praying mantis is, could in numbers easily sting it to death, but it doesn't. The answer lies in the camouflage strategy of the mantis, and now the wasp usually visualizes the mantis among the foliage. The mantis is not seen as a threat to the wasp. Large female praying mantis, almost ready to produce her egg case, needs one last meal. It's a European wasp. It says the bullies of the insect world. Insect mimicry. They ho- okay. <laughs> so I guess uh, that's the answer there. The fucking praying mantis. Here's a giant hornet versus a praying mantis. This. Oh, whoa. Dude, this praying mantis fucked this wasp up quick. The wasp is walking around. It's, too, it's pretty dope. I wish we could show it and not get pulled off of YouTube. Whatever happens to those when we get pulled off of those, Jamie? Do we get back on? Yes. Yes and no. This is worth watching, dude. Look at this one. Yeah, that's the one I'm watching. Oh, yeah. Praying Mantis I'm versus small video. in the corner. I think we could maybe get yeah. away with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Praying Mantises are gangster. They fuck wasps. Yeah. The wasps don't have a chance. He just holds them and starts eating them. That's what's really crazy. They're so strong, they just eat the wasps back. Just that's hang on crazy. and eat them. Yeah, that's a fucking vicious, vicious animal. The world of those those creatures is just so evil and alien. We just don't think about it because they're so small. But yeah, on their level, it's like ruthless people, like not people, but the other animals are like, they run scared. Mm-hmm. But for us, it's like a pair of vans can just take them both out at once. Yeah, they're, these other bees are sw- swimming or uh, flying around. This praying man is not sure how to save their friend, but they don't know what to do. While those wasp is getting just eaten alive uh, yeah. just eating the back of his head it's horrific man he's just holding on to it and just eating it we just we're we're looking at it in this tiny scale so it doesn't seem that horrific but mm-hmm. if a praying mantis is the size of a giraffe <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah and we saw it chase after a hippo and jack it yeah and it was it was fucking up this hippo in front of all the other hippos and there wasn't a goddamn thing they could do about it they just had to sit there and just deal with the fact that this huge mechanized looking beast taking chunks out of the hippo's head and they're like oh fuck do we go over there and save him what do we do that's why like size is in the the animal kingdom is so relevant because when you get really low wow there's a praying man just jacked that bee they don't play games, man. They don't play games. They're so strong. Dude. They just hold on to the bee and start eating them. Is that his death rattle? You know, he's just trying his to fly away. <laughs> he's trying to fly away. Look how much stronger those things are. That's like... He plants his legs. John Jones versus Bobby Lee. That's what that's like. <laughs> that's what that's like. That's, that's what kind of a battle that is. Just holds him. It doesn't matter what he does. You're not going anywhere. And this uh, praying mantis is a motherfucker, man. Just holds on to him and starts eating. Dude. Yeah, that's a weird world. It's just tiny, tiny, tiny so we don't freak. But if it was big, it would be way more ruthless than what we're seeing, like, even amongst mammals, like predator mammals. When we see, like, a lion take out a gazelle, like, I guess that's not as creepy to me because they're mammals. Yeah. If I saw... Giant praying mantis take out a gazelle. I'd be way more freaked out. He's corn like the way, cobbing. The way they corn look, it's, it looks more <laughs> alien. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. The, with their weird bugged out eyes and their crazy arms. Yeah. And their antenna, that gets some kind of weird internet. Yeah. All of it, man. Yeah. <laughs> if a praying mantis didn't exist and you got to see this, you'd be like, what? If this was a, a character in a movie. You're like, what planet is this on? Yeah. That t- easily could be, if it was large, it could be an alien in a movie. Like the movie Alien, if that thing was chasing you, that'd be just as scary. Oh, yeah. Big giant ass fucking crab arms. It's going to clamp a hold yeah. of you. <laughs> They're probably designed after the praying mantis. I bet some a, animal like that. Yeah, I bet there's probably definitely some influence. Yeah. those Because if you think about like bugs... Bugs were just like what those aliens were like. The alien, they were like this emotionless, ruthless thing that just like sort of popped out of the darkness and clamped a hold of you and fucking yeah. shot a tongue into your brain and sucked your brain yeah. out. How is that any different than what we just saw that thing do? I know. 
Yeah, you don't see any humanity because the eyes don't look the same. They're ma- like the, yeah. you, you can't like identify with it. You're like, this is a foreign species, and this giant tongue's coming at me to rip my heart out of my chest. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of exactly what it is. Like the difference between when we see like a cat eat a gazelle. You yeah. know, when you see a cat, whoa, what is this? A Praying bird? mantis versus hummingbird. No way. What happens? There's just three of them. Well, h- praying mantises kill hummingbirds, dude. Really? Yeah, so hummingbirds are scared of them. There's a, there's a video of a, a hummingbird with a praying mantis in his mouth. It's really fucked. Or a praying mantis with a hummingbird in his mouth. It looks like they jacked are, him there, yeah, right? Are yeah. super small, So too. they attacked him? Where did they attack him? Right here he is. And those things are fucking aliens also. Hummingbirds? Yeah, they're beautiful. Where does he jack them? You know the smallest hummingbird is the size of like a dime? Really? Yeah, I saw one. I went to a, I, I did a oh. dissection. Uh, oh, and shit. Oh, dude, the, oh, the my praying God. mass wins. Holy cow. Whoa, did it explode? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at this. It's waiting and the hummingbird gets close. And when the hummingbird goes for the food, it attacks the hummingbird. Watch this. It's this like is playing crazy. dead. Look at this. Swat. Oh, look at his... Bam! Took him looks, down. It was a suicide bomber. <laughs> that's crazy. That's like UFC shit. That that's was insane. crazy. Yeah, that's, what, that's how scary those things are. That thing was bigger than him. Fuck. Fuck need, praying mantises, They need dude. a more threatening name. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> praying mantis. You're like, yeah, because it stands weird. And it also kills hummingbirds. The well, it's the prey is P-R-E-Y. It's not like praying mantis. I think it is A-Y, right? Is it? Because I think the way yeah. they, yeah. yeah. Oh, it is the praying way they mantis. stand, yeah. I always thought it was praying. Yeah, because of what, I mean, yeah. Like they prey they on do. things. Yeah, it would suck if... They spelled it prey, and they were just Praying sweeties. Mantis <laughs> I know. Snake. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't attack a fucking snake. Oh my god. No. It, no way. Snake. You, yeah. You if know, we get kicked off YouTube, yeah, we, we don't. Fuck. Just fucking play. <laughs> what the? Fuck? Um, I'm tired of this shit. Praying mantises also led uh, the the dudes to Bethlehem. I remember, if I remember. Dude, <laughs> you're making shit up. <laughs> no, man. I think that's real. A praying mantis jacks a snake. A corn snake, about 10 inches in length. That's about what size my dick, son. <laughs> we'll just keep on pushing it back and forth. Confused a little. Are you trying to trick the algorithm? Yeah. Yeah. That ain't going to work, you put fucking negative. silly bitch. Yeah, I'll put it negative. <laughs> that shit ain't going to work. <laughs> what did we just see? Whoa, turn that back to regular. I need to see what his approach was. Look, he's upside down. He's spider manning it. That's insane. He's upside down. And he reached down and snatched a snake. They're so evil, bro. Incredibly, the snake is incapable of freeing itself from the grip of this six-inch mantis. That's amazing. It is in danger of being eaten alive by the insect. That's amazing. It's just eating it. Upside down. Look at that poor snake, too. He's like, what the fuck? Nobody eats me. <laughs> I'm a snake, man. Yeah, you're supposed to be... You're a leaf, I thought. <laughs> you're yeah. scared of me. It's amazing how much stronger insects are. Oh, you pussy. No jujitsu. Bad position. But what we didn't hear is a praying mantis go, like, go tell your friends. Yeah. I'm letting you live. Yeah, go Let tell your know. friends. I'm in town. Praying mantis versus tarantula? I don't want to... Dude. Praying, <laughs> praying mantises are motherfuckers. They're just showing off at this point. The next one's like, <laughs> praying mantis versus, versus teenage boy. You're like, what? No! <laughs> praying mantis versus baby. <laughs> yeah. Pra- praying mantis versus kitten. I bet that's out there. Oh, oh that would be great. <laughs> I bet it's out there. Is it out there? Yeah. Shit. Versus kitten. I, I gotta watch that. How is that possible? That's nuts. <laughs> so the idea is that its hands are uh, out like it's praying. Like it's like, oh, yeah. My, yeah, yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Praying mantis versus tarantula. Jacked a tarantula. It's saying, please come fuck with me. I it's dare just you. holding on to the tarantula. I think once it gets those clamps on you, all those bugs are fucked. They yeah. can't do shit about it once it gets those clamps. That's weird, man. Oh, no. Is that cat one bad? No, Really? This is crazy how strong that thing is. Yeah, cats are Look, evil. it just holds on. Look, it just hooked that fucking praying mantis's head, or that uh, tarantula's head. And the tarantula's yeah. tarantula like, like no. let me go, bitch. It's like, nope. 
They're it's so much stronger. Look, it's just eating it, biting its legs and shit. They're praying for mercy. Oh, oh but turn the tarantula around. turns it around. Oh, <laughs> oh, you got oh, jacked, son. It's over. He's jacked. Look, he's upside down, writhing in pain. No, please. Oh, is that the end? Yeah. What the what? fuck? <laughs> who shot the video up there? Who the guy's got, an asshole. Who got bored at that point? That's like the hot, like the height. <laughs> I know. Is this a part one of a ten part trilogy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two hours later. Scorpion versus tarantula. Japanese bug fight. You know what? What? Japanese bug fight stuff. Can you look up what the praying mantis is afraid of? Dude, like who prays pull on up, the praying mantis? Pull up praying mantis versus kitten. This no. is awesome. No, yeah, no, no, don't I worry. Got, don't worry. The kitten's fine. I got to see But it's that. it's wild to see, man. It's wild to see. You see how gangster a praying mantis really is. That's how you see how gangster they are. Like in my picture, you stay pathetic. No, no, no. This this one. This one here. Praying mantis. Boxing praying mantis versus kitten. Pull, <laughs> sorry, this one. Boxing. Yeah, you got to see this. This is so ridiculous. Like, they're going to war. The kitten and the praying mantis are fucking throwing down to the death. Yeah, yeah. this is it. Look at this. Look at this fucking praying mantis. He's not scared of shit. That kitten fucks him up. Bitch, what? Bitch. <laughs> swat, swat. But look at him. He's still up, still swinging at the kitten. The kitten doesn't know when to bite him. He's scared to bite him. Look at him. It's fucking him up, though. Pop, 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 pop. Dude. Look how tough a praying mantis is. It takes a blow to the head by something way bigger than it. Who is that guy? <laughs> Speaking voodoo. Okay, don't do that, Brian. You ruined the performance. <laughs> this cat's doing a great job. Praying man is all fucked up. You got a standing eight count. Cat oh. goes right back to oh. him. Boom, body slam. We can jump. That wasn't a jump. That cat bit him in the head. Look at him. He's still fighting back, though. It's crazy. And the cat is obviously scared of him a little bit. Because he's so fast. Oh, another bite. You're, fu you're fucked up, son. I didn't know they had, like, wings like that. Yeah. Look at that thing. What a creepy ass alien bug. One millionth the size of that cat. It's still <laughs> fighting back. Oh shit. How many praying men is this in Box. body waste? In body body weight. How many praying men does it take to equal Box that cat? Um, that cat's about ten pounds. Yeah. Praying mantis is about two ounces. So sixteen ounces is a pound. Yeah, that's a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Is the mathematical we were, equation. Okay, he just jacked it. He's just jacked it. It's down now. He must have bit it in the head. Now he's like, what, bitch? Oh, it's on his back again. Yeah. Yeah. What, bitch? What, bitch? What's up, bitch? What's up, bitch? I swat you in your head, bitch. Pop. The praying man is still trying to fight back. Dude. I want the camera to widen out, and there's just like a circle of like Filipino dudes like betting money on the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, probably, right? That's a good thing to bet on, like how long a praying mantis lasts with a cat. Yeah. I had no idea until this podcast how gangster praying mantises were. I know. I, I like want to know, like, taking mine who, who, who preys on the praying mantis? Like, who's their predator? Mm. Like, their direct predator? That's a good question. Predator to the praying mantis. Uh, here's a mouse versus a fucking praying mantis. It's got to be some kind of bird that's, uh. like, tougher than a hummingbird. Hmm, yeah. What are the enemies of a praying mantis? Okay, let's find out. Hey, Joe, check this out real quick, because I, I don't want to show too much of this video, because it's... Wait, look. Oh, we jacked a mouse. That's incredible. <laughs> That's fucking crazy, these guys. Oh, my God. Show that again, dude. Show that again. Right. I don't care if they pull us off of YouTube. I need to see this. Look at this. Look at this mouse. It doesn't move. Dude. Bitch! Wow. Oh, oh no. gross. you can hear it. That. The mouse soon draws its last breath. It's an odd sight to watch an insect devouring a mammal. Yes, it Whoa. is. Whoa. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that, that's the most gangster insect in the insect world, period. It's right? got to be, yeah. It's got to be. I mean, it doesn't have any venom. It's doing all this shit with no venom. It's just, yeah, it's got like those big praying mantis hands or whatever. It's essentially them. just doing jujitsu and, and eating it. Yeah. It just does jujitsu and then just starts eating. He holds them in side control and just eats the shit out of them. Wow. That's insane. 
It was weird because the the one that was uh, on my patio, it was right next to where I was sitting the whole day. And Did it he would swing just, at you? No, it just stared at me. His head would like look like when like uh, my girlfriend came outside, he would look over at my girlfriend and then look back at me. But like I would walk next to it, it never flew away, it never it moved. Move, yeah, yeah. It, 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 the only thing I f- uh, the dog started like trying to sniff it and it, and it kind of looked down at it, like get away from me. It was probably wondering if it could <laughs> eat you. Yeah, Jeez. it's probably looking at you and go, "Fuck, he's well, too big." But I think like he's... later, it's like boxing an oak tree or something like that, <laughs> like working out. <laughs> it was like I think he's vulnerable. He just, I feel like I could get him, but just not this. quite big enough. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, they're getting into modeling now. Look at that! Thing. They're modeling now. <laughs> Look at that <laughs> thing! Crazy! They're breaking into entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> That's dance. Wow! Progressive dance. That's, put that picture up again, man. I the need next to see one's going to be like... <laughs> Look at the body on that thing. It's so weird. What a strange animal. And how horrific would that be Dude. if that thing was like horse-sized and was chasing after you? That's it going like, now what, bitch? Like yeah. there's something on the ground? <laughs> Fucking the f- mouse? Do you imagine the physical strength of one of those things if it was like the size of a horse? Oh, yeah. Dude. It, they'd be tearing apart cars. Here's yeah. the one that was my, my yeah. house. Like, I'm going to hide in my car. No. no. And they just ripped the... that car open easy. That's the one. That was, was yours? Like, yeah. Look at them, man. Yeah. Evil fucking Those bug. crazy. We're just so lucky that they're little. They're like the bugs from Starship Troopers, right? Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. like the best analogy. Or the best um, Yeah. Best they comparison. do look like them. They had oh. to have been modeled like directly after oh, them. Oh, yeah. For sure, right? Those Starship Trooper bugs are fucking awesome. That was a silly movie, but what are you doing? Brando before and after his role in Godfather before makeup and after makeup. Oh, really? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Oh, so they made him look older. I didn't know they did that. He almost looks like, like a George Clooney-Brad Pitt combo right here. Oh, uh, he was a handsome man when yeah. he was young. What, what does that have anything to do with what we're doing? I don't doing know. <laughs> we're talking about... <laughs> <laughs> you goddamn conversation-killing... <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about a green <laughs> bug that destroys. <laughs> well, that Starship Troopers movie, yeah, was uh, what that would. Be, that's very realistic, in terms of like if there Damn. was an invasion by bugs, we would be getting killed. Oh yeah, if there was bugs like that, do we even have like what kind of guns would it take to shoot down a giant praying mantis? You'd have to have some fucking serious firepower. Like a regular rifle is not going to do it. Like if you you shot a shotgun at a praying mantis. The shit would probably ricochet right off of it. Probably. I wonder if they're like their armors and like paneling. Yeah, I don't know if it's like a like an armadillo is just like straight through. But they seem like they have like like Batman has like panels so we can right. like move around. It seems like that's what they're like. Well, I bet they grow shit back too. I bet that they're like lobsters and a lot of other I bugs. Hope not. When they snap off a wing or something like that, they just grow it back. You took this photo. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was the uh, <laughs> praying mantis that was in my yard. Well, yours is, like, brown. That one was, like, on vacation. Well, I think he was um, I think he was um, being camouflaged. Uh, oh, they can change color? I think so. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I think Whoa. so. Okay, can mantis camouflage? Let's see. Wow. That would be cool. Yep, they can. Whoa. I had no idea. Yeah. Yep, defense and camouflage. Yeah, so that's what that thing was doing. <clears throat> so that, that's what that Damn. thing was doing in my yard. If you look at it, it's on that stone ball, which is the top of a fountain. Yeah. And it's it blended in the exact same color as wow, the ball. Wow, that is so cool. Yep. Pretty weird. Praying mantis can camouflage perfectly into an environment of sticks, barks, leaves, and flowers. The mantis is almost four inches long. Blah, 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 blah. The most evil looking one would be a red one. Oh, yeah. If it camouflaged onto, like, you know, something red. They can be crazy eyes. They can be green, brown, or a combination of colors to match their environment. It will molt every few weeks and then can take on the colors of its natural surroundings. Wow. A praying mantis might even mimic the charred remains of sticks, weeds, or grass after a fire. (gasps) Wow. Oh, God. That it started. (laughs) <laughs> with its dick <laughs> swaying repetitively from side to side is a common camouflage behavior of the praying mantis it might be used to mimic the swaying movement of vegetation in the wind remember this wow remember where was that this is a video you posted about the oh yeah that was this gangster praying mantis at the commons wait a minute what's this oh, this is the the, the parasite 
Guy kills a zombie praying man as revealing a huge parasite living inside of it. What? Oh, no, no, no. This is not what I'm talking about. I thought this was something else. Oh, that's right. He killed it, and there's something inside of it. Yeah, parasite. Look at that parasite just coming out of it. Whoa. It's like a snake inside of it. Yeah, that's essentially like that movie, The Strain. Back that up so we can see that whole thing pop out. Ew, Jesus Christ, that's so weird. <laughs> Welcome to the world of bugs. This is what this episode is. Nick Yusuf is hilarious and the world of bugs. Yeah. Look at that thing. Also buy my new album. Yeah, also buy his yeah. new album. <laughs> and don't think about this black dick coming oh out of this. Oh my god. Dead praying mantis. Wow. So when the body died, the parasite left it it's and like, just I'm weaseled out. out. Wow, that is so fucked. Look how big that thing is, man. It's like it just keeps of- going. Well, it doesn't know what to do either. Yeah, it's so big. How was that oh inside my of it? God, it's the entire body of the thing. That's incredible. And it doesn't. The mantis didn't look like it was like fat or anything. And that spray that's on the ground—that's the poison, right? So it's it's rolling around in the poison. It's still going. That so, is. So that parasite controlled the the like like a zombie. He mm-hmm. controlled the uh, the mantis. Mantis. Well, there's an aquatic worm. I don't know if that's the same one that it gets inside of a grasshopper and when it's about to be born, when it reaches the right size, it actually oh. takes over the mind of the grasshopper and gets the grasshopper to commit suicide. So it hot wires. Look at that thing, man. It looks like a snake. It totally looks like a snake. Oh. I would not swallow that. Yeah. <laughs> you would for like a lot of money though, right? No. How much how much no would it, way. you have to get paid? Would, to imagine swallow that. how big it would grow inside of you. Look uh, at like the a human. The size of it when that guy grabbed it and touched it. That is some alien invasion type shit there. That's what that is. And what if there's a parasite living in that parasite? Dude, Dude you're blowing my mind, going. man. <laughs> you're getting too crazy. Yeah, yeah right? I'm under. That's scary. Like there's parasites like that that live in humans. Oh, yeah. They just grow in your intestines? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's bizarre. From live sushi. Yeah, people get it from freshwater sushi. They say that you shouldn't really be chewing down too much salmon, salmon sushi. That's where you right. can catch it. Like freshwater stuff that lives Dude. in freshwater. Dude. Yeah. Check, Fuck, man. Check this out. This is creepy. Uh, whoa. What the fuck, man? <laughs> look at that look face. Look at those eyes. It looks like, like digital. That's like, the look. last thing that mouse saw. Jesus Christ, what an evil bug a praying mantis is. <laughs> look mouse at that. Like, Hi, guys. Condos. That thing was clamping down on your face the size of a giraffe. This guy is a It's funny. Eye. It looks like a lot of models. How dare you? Like when it was modeled, it really does. <laughs> a lot of models look like aliens. Uh, is that an eyeball? Third eye. <laughs> is that what it is or is it, it just like, like it. a... Is Dude, it? it's even spiritual. It's totally spiritual <laughs> before it eats you. And look at these antennas, like gold-plated uh, antennas. They're dope as fuck, yo. Look at that. That's that is pretty cool. It's like it's like braided. It's Persian. <laughs> 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 Don't tell Maz Jabani that joke. <laughs> Bro, that's so racist. Yeah, yeah. Why does it have to be Persian? Why can't it be Mexican? <laughs> because go to Studio City. That's why. <laughs> go walk around there. <laughs> yeah, that didn't even look real. It's, yeah. When you see them on a large scale, you get a, a sense of what it really is. When you see those fuckers, it's not trying to kill a frog. No, it's just hanging out on top of a frog. Wow. They're like buddies. It's like, I need a ride. Wow. Those things are Actually, amazing. There's a lot of pictures of frogs and them being friends. That is a gangster bug, but I kind of like that the tarantula jacked it. Because that was a battle to the death and tarantula won. Tar- tarantula will reverse position. <laughs> and sunk those teeth yeah. in there. I wonder if in nature, Damn. though, who would have won? Because it's camouflaged. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because that was in like right. a kitchen. Yeah, it looked like they set that fight up. Right. <laughs> Before they turned on the camera, they like, broke one of the mantis' legs and like, all right, go. Yeah, I wonder if the, the praying mantis would go after something as big as a tarantula in the wild. Yeah. It seems like they're just so evil to go after anything that's in front of them. The fucking things are attacking birds. I know, and mice. And mice. And they win. And a fucking cat? It's, yeah. it's just crazy. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. They go after cats. Like, every animal has an, another animal they run from. Where mm-hmm. they go, whoa, shit, all right, I'm out of here. Yeah. I thought we owned this area. That praying mantis didn't even try to fly away. It has wings, right? They have wings. Yeah. 
And he's like, nah, I'll just fucking take my chances here, took it out. Come yeah. on, cat. Come on. Yeah. Come get some of this. Yeah. Come get some of it. <laughs> Damn, bitch, I fucking stab your fucking stupid nose. <laughs> just took it out with this praying mantis yeah. on the sidewalk. Dude, that's crazy. Uh, that's like, seriously, that's like you fighting a house. Yeah. It's like you fighting a, a, like a giant elephant. Right, like, like a semi truck. Come on, yeah. you're smaller than you. You you're bigger in in comparison than you would be. You know, if you were fighting an elephant, than that thing is to that cat. What yeah. is this? Uh, wait, do you see? Do you see the mantis? Oh yeah, he's like this tucked away in there, the like a flower. What an evil Whoa. fuck! He's yeah. pretending to be a flower. Close quarters. What a (laughs) creepy ass fucking bug. He looks exactly like the color of the flower, totally blended in. And to hide is something beautiful, too. Look at at this. That's what they say about the devil. That's incredible. And look at this fly. Like, oh, you know, just hanging out. Nothing. (laughs) Bitch! (laughs) Look how quick it did that. You can't even see it. Oh, and just eat your face. Eat him live. Damn. Wow. Dude, back that shit up so we could watch that one more time. What a bizarre it's animal. to say for sure where the plant ends and the insect starts. You really can't tell. Yeah. yeah. This, this elaborate brilliant. the mantis to hunt at its leisure. Look how brilliant it is. It looks so much. I mean, even the highlights, yeah. the pink highlights like a flower. Oh, that bitch, so that's, fast. So fast. that's so fast. <laughs> you can't see shit. Oh my god. That's pretty. It's beautiful. Uh, That's like the most beautiful murder. image. <laughs> yeah. The most beautiful video of something killing something ever. I know. The colors like the white with the blue. Oh my god, look at that one. What? That's incredible. That is incredible. Wow. It's like we're looking at this uh That's image from the Rogan board. Evil. <laughs> Yeah, it's gorgeous. To take shape as like one of the most beautiful images. Yeah. Like who doesn't like a flower? And they did it perfect. Like with with perfect highlights. Like I would have never thought. Like if you showed me a photo of that and I didn't watch the video, I've never thought there was a praying mantis in there. I would have bet you a lot of money. (laughs) Oh, yeah. What are the odds there's a praying mantis in there? None. Zero. It's a flower. You fucking idiot. You don't even know what a mantis looks like. Come on, you want to bet? (laughs) Where would it fit in that flower? (laughs) (laughs) Don't be retarded. You really think it can look that? No, it looked exactly like it. You know what that means? If they were the size of humans, they'd be like taking like the shape of like cheeseburgers and like all kinds of stuff. They would look like the guys from Duck Dynasty. They'd be wearing Right. Camo. Right. <laughs> Look at I'm that. Walking here. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. That's so weird. That's so weird that that's a real thing. Why can't people do that? We, we we're lucky people can't do that. They would be eating people the way they mantis is eating flies. People no, just just, can't, sh- just camouflage. People. Yeah, that would not be good. People would be hiding. That's hiding true. Hiding in your bushes and there's shit. There's like six people in here yeah. that were yeah. like <laughs> people would be blending. I don't know about. Like uh, that character on uh, X Men, the, the Mystique. Girl. Yeah, Mystique. How come they have a new Mystique and they didn't even bring that up? By the way, what do you mean? Uh, How'd they go from Rebe- Rebecca Romaine Stamos age. age? She got too old. Oh, because it's the like younger a prequel. One? Yeah, doesn't matter. It's a different person. Don't That's they true. have CGI? They can turn one guy. You know, they could turn people into the Hulk. And you tell me you can't CGI that chick to look exactly like Rebecca Romaine Stamos? Right. Come on, son. That evil fucking thing. What's it eating there? Ice cream. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Looks like some sort of it's a bug. It's pulling a pin off a grenade. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's eating a turkey leg. Yeah. <laughs> He's at the Renaissance. Renaissance. Renaissance fair. <laughs> Renaissance fair bug. I think the bug world is the creepiest world in all of nature. Yeah. Second only to the fish world. Right. But the fish world's have, pretty creepy. Bugs just look so creepy, and they're able to, like, they have multiple hands, tentacles, all these things. Yeah. And fish, because you know, you're like, well, it's out. If it's out of the water, it's over. But a yeah. bug can just get in your bed, sneak in your house. What's the world's largest bug? That's a good question. Uh, what would you have if you had a guess? What would you say the world's largest bug is? The iPhone. <laughs> Mwah, you fucking baby. Um, <laughs> world's largest bug. Uh, it's probably um, like some kind of cockroach. I'd say beetle. Yeah, that, or that, beetle, that, some kind of something. That, like that. half life thing. Oh my god, that it's pill enormous. Bug. It's it's this. Oh my god, does it dude. look like a pill bug? 
It's so big. It's This is a gross animal. Look up the world's biggest insect is so huge it eats carrots. Gross. What? Biggest it's so huge it eats carrots. Insect. Look at this thing. Whoa. <laughs> that's like a... Exactly. That's a great, great sound. That's real. Wow. It's a giant weta, W-E-T-A. Hmm. Um, it came across the cricket-like creature, which has a wingspan of seven inches, after two days of searching on a tiny island, Lake Barrier Island in New Zealand. It only lives there. It was uh, wiped off the mainland by rats accidentally introduced by Europeans. Pull that picture up again, man. Here's, a, uh, here's another one. It's like a big grasshopper. Yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ, that thing's gross. Gross. It's like a crab or like a lobster or something. Yeah. Which are related, by the way. See, I was thinking it was going to be something like this, which was like a pill bug, I thought. That's pretty big, too. Yeah. yeah. That's a Madagascar hissing cockroach, isn't it? Um, I think that's what that is. They yeah. get pretty big. Didn't you eat one of those? Yeah. Yeah, I ate one of those. <laughs> Not that bad. See, see, this is what I thought it was. like one of these. Oh, things. yeah, those creepy things. They're, they're like cephalopods or something like that. Yeah. Is that what those are called? Like like land otters. Yeah. Yeah, those things have been around for they a long time. Bad eating habits. They, yeah, they live on too. Doritos. <laughs> yeah. They hate Cool Ranch. It's the what stoner are, variety. What's the <laughs> technical <laughs> name for those things? Does it say yeah. in that image? Lossopod. Uh, I, I, Lossopod? Lossopod. Remember that? Isopod? Isopod. Isopod. Yeah, that's it. Jesus Christ. Look at that. Damn. It's a lobster. It's like a Happy. land lobster. Ugh. That's bigger. Obviously. Yeah. So that must be the biggest. But that, that has like more than, isn't eight legs or more considered like an, an arachnid insect. or? Yeah. Insect is six? Yeah, I don't know. Is that how it works? Insect, yeah. sect being six? Yeah. That makes sense. Right. Or like arachnid is spider. By the way, this is Nick Yusuf's new CD. Uh, what is it called? Oh, yeah. Nick I forgot Yusuf? about my own album. It's called uh, Stop, uh, Stop, Not, Stop Owning. Not Owning This. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a smart way to market it. Um, yeah, really, stop not owning it, ladies and gentlemen. iTunes and allthingscomedy.com. Please purchase it. It's my first album, and I'm very proud of it. Nick Yusuf, old school comedy store veteran. Yeah. Dude, you go back. I know I you know. from, when did I meet you? Probably met you in like... The parking lot of the comedy store in 2002, three. And you were you used to work there. Oh, yeah. You did the, the whole stint, like Ari, like a lot of guys. Oh, yeah. That's Duncan. how I met Ari. Duncan, I worked the phones. He was the talent coordinator. Ha! <laughs> Duncan did the full stint. Oh, I know. <clears throat> That's a good stint for comics. That's the it one was. place where a comic can get a job, like doing comedy, being surrounded by degenerates on a constant <laughs> basis, and eventually yeah. become a professional comedian yeah. to have his own comedy CD. Exactly, yeah. I love those stories, man. I, I love watching guys come up in, in L.A. Um, that was one of the few places where you'd see guys come up. Yeah. Joey Diaz is starting to do the comedy store again. I love that, man. Starting this is tomorrow. a That's strange great. dilemma. That, uh, since uh, Tommy has decided to uh, part ways with the comedy store. Move story. on That's the to, legal. The next, to the next stage of uh, existence. Suicide. We, we did a great Ice House Chronicles <laughs> Friday, by the I way. Heard. It's, I mean, Tammy Pascatelli, Hannibal Bears. I mean, it, everybody came in because everyone wanted to talk about it. It was yeah. ridiculous. And what, everybody wanted to talk about how ridiculous Tommy was? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's a great episode. Well, hey, man. Did anyone defend him? You know, everyone kind of... Ha- s- somewhat defended him as being you know like this mysterious person and it's probably going to be the end of that part of the comedy right, yeah. store where it's like ooh, it's haunted and oh mitzi mm-hmm. but uh uh i think you know i i showed a couple of the th- videos that i made <laughs> and i think that kind of silenced everyone like yeah he was crazy uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well don't you ha- here's the deal though mm-hmm. to take that job and to try to keep up the legacy of that famed institution of insanity you got to be a little crazy nobody else wants that job nobody oh, else yeah. would have done that job they would have turned it into some sort of a corporate whatever you know fill in yeah. the blank sugar the shack sunset chuckle hut yeah exactly <laughs> i mean it, it could have easily been something that it isn't what it is is a very very bizarre place yeah. like as far as comedy clubs go one of the most bizarre places of all time and th- one of the most historical comedy clubs ever in the world oh yeah as far as the art of stand-up comedy, how many historical comedy clubs rival the comedy store? Very few, because it's in the same location. 
You know, you have like a few other ones, like the Ice House that's older. Mm -hmm. You have um, the Comedy Factory. Magic Club, which is older. The Laugh Factory, which has a lot of historical significance, but Laugh Factory is not the same. The Laugh Factory is not it's just, it's a good club. It's a great club to work at. But as far as like, like a place where when you're there, you're like, holy shit, I'm at the goddamn comedy store. Yeah. You know, that was the Mecca. Because the store like pr produced comics mm -hmm. with the Ice House and the other ones just have had them come through. Exactly. You know? Yeah, the store is the, one of the only places that produce comics, all because of Mitzi. Yeah. You know, that lady, um, she helped a lot of comedians, me included. Yeah, she helped a, a lot of comedians. I th I think if they just keep the open mics uh, as strong as it is there, I mean, like Sundays and Mondays there, uh, you know, they have a really good open mic program. Kill Tony on top of that is mm -hmm. you know really good for the open mics. I think that they, you'll still be able to make new comics there, and it will still yeah. be a good place for hiring comics to start. comics yeah. as employees, mm -hmm. letting them kind of graduate through the system. Yeah, that and now that, you know, you remove some of the crazy aspect as far as, like, the real negative crazy, mm -hmm. there was just too much ego and madness and just too much intolerable madness is the, yeah. the best way to describe it. Like, you're not dealing with rational people. You're dealing with someone who's intolerably crazy. And it's not that the whole intolerable <clears throat> crew is removed. Mm -hmm. There's still some in intolerable behind-the-scenes folks, but it's way better now. It's at least gotten 50% better. And that other group you never see ever 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 there yeah. so it's, it's it doesn't matter yeah and you could also go online to see what when, when they're out of town and just go <laughs> then <laughs> those days yeah but that <laughs> makes you seem like a stalker uh -huh. you know i love the improv man i mm -hmm. i did one thing that changed my act quite a bit is when i left the store and i started doing the improv i i found audiences that aren't heckling they're not right. like constantly heckling they have actually have crowd control yeah and then I and then I also noticed that they have two shows a night. They'll do an eight o'clock show and a ten o'clock show, which is way better for like the audience's attention span. Mm -hmm. And it made me realize like the the, con the comedy store is like lifting weights with like a weight vest on, running up a hill. You know, right? When you get through that place, the great thing about that is you go anywhere else and you're fucking golden. Yeah, the regular audiences will be so much easier than the the audiences that you deal with on a weekly basis at the store. Oh yeah, going up like after. 12 comics mm -hmm. five six of them are just like crushing mm -hmm. the crowd's drunk they've been there for three hours and if anything topical happens by the time you get up on stage it's <laughs> yeah. been discussed 50 fucking times yeah there was a uh, one time when ari was working there and the um chinese uh fighter pilot crashed with an american fighter jet mm -hmm. and the guy's name was wong wei that was his name w-o-n-g-w-e-i mm -hmm. Everybody did a joke on it. Nobody saw anybody else's set, but everybody came in and did a <laughs> Wong, a Wong yeah. Wei. Is this real life? Right. Wong Wei. Do you know what the guy's name was? Wong Wei. And at a certain point in time, the audience is like, are we being trolled? Is this like an inside <laughs> joke? Do they not know that everybody before them has done a Wong Damn. Wei joke? Right. Even crowd work sometimes. Yeah. If you go up, at, like, where are you from? And someone else will answer, like, oh, he's from Lancaster. Yeah. How the fuck did you know? <laughs> Because he's been asked uh, ten times. <laughs> I, yeah, I love the fact that this happened because it seems like a lot of comics are coming back to this place that didn't really want to want to come. Here. By the way, Tosh uh, wanted to apologize for shaking your hand weird last time he saw him. Daniel? Yeah. What? But it was cool, like seeing Tosh and seeing what? Like, yeah, he said he said, "Tell Rogan I'm sorry about how I shook your hand." What is he talking I, I don't about? Know. <laughs> he's an interesting guy. He's a great guy. He he seemed very. I love that dude. He was he, he didn't shake my hand weird at all. I don't know what he's talking. About. He told me to say that too. Comics are super Funny. sensitive, man. <laughs> so, comics are super sensitive. There's weird shit that'll stick in a comic's head, and then they'll bring it up. Like you know, there was this time where you know I said this thing and I probably shouldn't have said it. Like, what are you talking about? Like I don't even know what the fuck you said. Yeah. Like oh, I made a joke about something. I really didn't mean it. I'm like. I don't remember it at all. So let's like you're you're carrying on to that. Like you're <laughs> holding on to like something they said that you might misconstrue as a slight or as a, a joke that you might not take it well. Some comics are like super sensitive. You know? Oh yeah, because you so what you want to be like you know liked and respected, and you're just like yeah. always worried about saying the wrong thing because no one knows who you are yet, and you're just like I I want to make friends, make a good first impression. But a guy like Daniel Tosh, like he shouldn't be oh, so yeah. sensitive. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> multi-millionaire i know awesome beautiful man he's a good dude he's fun to be around too he's hilarious too he's so like candor when you talk to him about like other comedians and shit like mm -hmm. he was ragging on this one comedian <laughs> that he's had difficulties with and it was goddamn hilarious so brian callen and i were crying laughing it was really funny 
That's funny. It's yeah. very interesting. But the um, you know, the improv has guys like that. They're there all the time. I wonder if guys like that will start showing up at the store now, too. Yeah, David Spade was there yesterday. Mm-hmm. Or the Did he do before. a set? Is he yeah. doing stand-up again? I guess he so. Is, yeah. How was it? It was all right. He was working on a couple new bits. He had, like, notes up there with him. So, mm-hmm. But, like, he had some funny stuff about, like, going skiing for the first time. He had, like, a story on that. And all the, the names of all the slopes were, like, these, like, horrifying like evil names or like Hitler's abortion was the one of them and just stuff like that it was really funny but you can tell he's like developing it and it's like it's interesting to see him you right. know lot do stand up live well he probably like took some time off doing a lot of TV and movies oh, yeah. and shit and then a lot of those guys they lose their chops man they mm-hmm. don't they, they have like a, a hard struggle to try to get back yeah you know getting back Norm MacDonald's been there a few yeah, times. Yeah, Norm's been yeah. coming there. I love him. Yeah. I love Chris Norm MacDonald. Yeah. If he comes up, kidnap him and dra- drag him to this podcast to you. <laughs> oh, I yeah. love Norm. Uh, I'd love to do it, but uh, what time? Yeah. I don't drive. What time does that say? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's, a, he's a character, man. He's a character. We were on a plane with him once, and uh, all the way on the plane, he's talking about how he quit smoking. Yeah, yeah, quit smoking. You know, he's like, talk, he lands, immediately goes and buys cigarettes. <laughs> Brian, let me bum a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, he immediately ran and got a pack of cigarettes, and he was outside. I, I guess I'm smoking again. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> but the funniest guys are like that, man. They're just nutty. Yeah. They're just nutty, you know. That's, um, that comes with the territory, right? So have you been asked a million times if you'll go back to the comedy store? Now that at least ten, All right? Not a million, but at least ten. And do Friday kill t- or Monday no, kill Tony? It's not. That's not happening. <laughs> that's not happening. But uh, I'm happy. I'm happy that uh, the place will get more normal. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. And this this would be more relaxed. There's just too much insanity there with that guy running shit. Absolutely. He was, you know, I don't hate the guy, but there's just certain levels of intolerable bullshit where you're just like okay mm-hmm. you're too crazy you're too crazy to run this yeah. matter of time well you know mm-hmm. that clip I'm mm-hmm. more talented <laughs> than anyone here well yeah I'm the most talented person in this building yeah oh, god that was yeah the, you don't know how Same. much power and money's behind me <laughs> that's right that's another the building yeah. likes me <laughs> yeah oh so happy <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone was saying like it would have been great if the way they fired him was they they bring him into an office and they go like, "Well, it's not just that, Tommy." <laughs> they start with that and then they fire him. It's just not. That. It's and then not he goes, that. "No, it's not that. It is just that this time. You're done." How much um, a tour are you doing? Um, m- m- not as much as I'd like. But I'm going to Chicago with Ari at the end of August. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. To do Zanies. Where are you guys going? Zanies downtown. That's a good spot. Yeah. We're doing one night. And we're going to hang out in the city for a couple of days. Beautiful. I open for Bobby still, which is good. Um, Bobby Lee? Bobby Lee, yeah. Beautiful. He's pretty good to me, yeah. He's a good dude. Yeah, he really is. He's one of those guys that, like, is... He's good to younger people, you know? Yeah. A lot of yeah. guys, like get to the top or wherever and then they're just like they either quit stand up or they don't have any time for newer guys and stuff but he's always been super cool yeah he got shit on a little bit when he was coming up you know so i think because of that you know he had a bunch of issues with guys that were that he was working with that just either didn't pay him or fucked with him or so he's he's super nice to people yeah that are coming up now yeah it's pretty great he takes care of comics and like he gives like even like way new comics that are like oh i'd like to like open for you on a local thing and he'll like you know let him have a few minutes just because he knows you know he remembers what that was like like yeah doing an, an not an open mic of any kind and like, there's gonna be 80 people there or like 200 they're like you know and he's like because it'll be like a, something local and he's like yeah if i can come down do five minutes yeah camaraderie between comics is one of the coolest things yeah, it's one of the coolest things because it's, uh, it's one of the things about the store as well. Is the store because everybody we're all hung out there, like it really fostered that sort of camaraderie. Yeah, there was so much fun just in that back parking lot area. Just the hilarious conversations that we've had back there. Yeah, you know that was just uh, it was a mad mad club. Are we running out of time? Yeah, three three minutes, minutes left. Yeah. Three minutes and we turn into a pumpkin. So everybody go buy Nick Yusef's, Yusef's new CD. 
and it is what is it called? Why stop not stop owning, not not owning, not owning, owning this? this. Yes. Stop not owning this. And is it available on iTunes? It is on iTunes and allthingscomedy.com. For those of you who hate iTunes, I also get more money if you buy it on allthingscomedy.com. But oh. if you're an iTunes guy, totally go there. It's on there. Rate it and review it. I think that helps, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah it'll definitely help. And this will help, too. So Nick Yusef, follow him on Twitter. It's Y-O-U-S-S-E-F. That's Y-O-U-S-S-E-F. And Nick is spelled normal. N-I-C-K. Nothing crazy. Yeah. No like Q. N-I. Yeah. And a Q. <laughs> Well, hey, man, thanks for doing this. This was fun, We've got to do it more often. Yeah, Definitely, I love it. Right? We learned and, uh, so much about praying mantises and did. all this like, great shit. <laughs> Fracking, I didn't know anything about it. This was fun. And it was actually a sort of like work in some way. Right. I think we hijacked the system. Yeah. Nick Yusuf, ladies and gentlemen, powerful Nick Yusuf. Please Thank you go, guys. go out and buy his shit. He's a very funny comedian. Uh, thanks to our sponsors. Let me pull them up because I don't have it on my thing anymore. Squarespace.com. Yeah, Squarespace. Thanks to Squarespace for uh, just nothing but positive feedback. I haven't heard one person say anything bad about Squarespace, which is a beautiful thing. And uh, if you go to Squarespace.com forward slash Rogan, is that it? Mm-hmm. No. S- Squarespace.com, enter in the code word Joe. So for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and enter in the code word Joe. And thanks also to, who else do we have today? Ting. Ting. Go to rogan.ting.com and save 25 bucks off of any of these new fantastic cell phone devices that Ting sells. That's rogan.ting.com, the official cell phone provider for the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Thanks also to onit.com. Go to O-N-N-I-T. Use the code word Rogan and save 10% off any and all supplements. Tomorrow, Shooter Jennings, son of the great Waylon Jennings. That's right, bitches. Respect. Until then, uh, much love and big kisses. See ya.